I can definitely visualize a path to to lifting the trophy with my team. It's the goal. It's the it's the dream coming through. Writing our name on, on the stairs just before you enter the stage. It's the biggest of the biggest names in esports. It's, it's just one legendary team after another, legendary players on the rosters. I want to do everything in my power to lift this fucking trophy. Another team who wants to etch their name into greatness. Oh yes, it's what we've been waiting for. The quarterfinals of Katowice, live from the Spodek, Na'Vi vs. Outsiders. Seven seconds. Screaming for help. If he could just deny the ball. The round is done. NPL with a hero play. A triple for good measure. Chance, a good frag, but to play in the clock, it's quite one to close. Six, secure seven. That's a half they can work with. Oh, Kyra, he's going down 100 to zero in the monotone. He's kicking only the one. And down goes fame. Not ready there for this. There's electronic again with impact. Electronic grace to close. 
A flawless round, a flawless scoreline. Is there time for a resurgence? Liquid are coming in confident. Whoa. A lot faster, a lot more in your face than what we've seen so far. Magisk is running away. Liquid have turned this game around. And this series, this map keeps getting ever closer. Enough with that swing. Liquid completes the comeback. We have no idea. They're chasing goats. Anyone home? They don't even fight Apex and he's rubbing it in. Easiest clutch of his damn life. Checking into Heartbreak Hotel tonight. Time and time again, it has been Na'Vi to absolutely tear heroic limb from limb. But this is a different Danish squad we are seeing today. Oh! 
on to next. And it's Canadian now, one on one with Modesty. Modesty oh! closes. One map away. G2 looking to remain undefeated, undaunted. Oh, they're going to be so mad. Moves it a passing glance. Canadian reveals himself. Now the trade is. Oh! His head and Canadian loves that one. And heroic show life in this grand final. That's your line from JKS. Supreme on the MP9. Give it to him. He takes it by force. But the first to hear it. Oh, what is that? The cousins in unison. Clean up. Canadian and Yami now. The try and step play. It's only Canadian. The fake surely Pizza. They've done it! From the land cafes and local tournaments now side by side, Mika has finally done it on his fourth time of asking. This is his grand final, this is theirs. Taken as a unit. Canada beats the champions of 2023. It's G2. They truly are champions. Destiny is no matter of chance, but a matter of choice. You are in control of your own fate. But what you cannot control is how others perceive you. Because in a tale of the favorites, the beloved, the heroes, must exist the antithesis. No more apparent in the dawn of CSGO than Flusher. Flusher cheating accusations, an absolutely wild time. You had a situation where someone like Flusher just had the craziest impacts, always seemed to be in the right place at the right time. He was a cheater in everyone's opinion, like, and there was no evidence or nothing, and he kind of like overcame it by accepting it and like taking it in as being a part of him. It's just a really weird thing looking back at it now. Then there was his right-hand man, an anti-hero in the eyes of many for a very different reason. If you'll allow me to be completely honest, I think JW was a piece of shit to be up against on a server. He was just defining all the rules. He, he would never play by the book. If you compare it to football, like he was playing dirty, but he was not really doing anything wrong. Like he was just doing his thing. It's definitely on the top two, top three list of, of the player I dislike playing the most. Speaking of disruptive play styles. First found, twist aggressing. They have to double peak, he's getting his shot. He's hitting another one. I think Simple moved to NA in order to get a new channels, and I think Simple didn't really know what he wanted to do with his career, wanted to do with his life back in the day. Uh, looked like it was a great learning experience for him. Uh, he had ups and downs in, in NA, probably more downs than, than ups to be fair. But I also do believe that had he not made the move to NA, had he not been in Liquid, had he not been part of all these scandals with Freaker saw it, with almost bottling him for Team Liquid in a qualifier where there was the team carrying him and, and not the other way around, I, I think Simple wouldn't have been as great as he is today. So it really made the, the character and it, it humbled him in a way that he needed to be humble when he was younger. The dilemma that lays in front of all of our perceived anti-heroes. Despite your attributes, your achievements, your accolades, how do you deal with what is outside your control? The perception of a persona, a caricature, founded upon a glimpse of your reality. 
doesn't matter where Kadian would go. It doesn't matter what country he'd go in. Uh, even on home soil, he would get booed. If he would face Astralis, it would be everyone against him. He's constantly trying to, to cater into the crowds that he's playing in front, but it, it doesn't matter. I think the attitude, um, the color he gives to the game, he will always be the villain, uh, no matter where he goes. And, and I think he thrives on that as well. He uses that energy, not only for himself, but also for his team. I think Blameth doesn't give a fuck about what people think, to be completely honest. I think he's very well aware of, of how he's approaching the game, how he's leading his team. So I, I think for him, it's just noise. And, you know, there's maybe 10, 15 people who knows exactly what he thinks about Counter-Strike, how he wants to approach it. The rest is just noise. The rest is just a, a bunch of noobs. Big Benjamin! He's back! I think the reason why Art gets a lot of hate, I think a lot of people can see the gaps he creates for the team and how they use it. That's probably like the balance of, of understanding why they do it and also accepting that that's how they play. Whereas James, it's exactly the opposite. He's just playing the percentages in his way of playing in a very like calculated way. One thing I know is like bringing an orb into a round is always a factor you have to consider playing against them. He's still gonna go for it. He picks up that one. No! But as we scroll back through the scriptures, what did anti-heroes of old teach us? Sure, people can think what they like, but in the end, if you really want it, it doesn't fucking matter. The whole cheating accusations, that can haunt you in kind of stepping into that role of saying, we will be the ones who hate us. And Flush has started really leaning into it. He had the lifted hat on, and he would go on to win, what, three majors? And, and you realize all of a sudden that like we created a monster. Jido you know, was like the face of Fnatic, which people kind of like hated. And they all just kind of said, you know what, if we're going to be hated, you know, fuck it, we'll be hated. We're going to move on and we're going to keep going forward and we're going to keep winning. Yeah, what better way to, to shut people up than to become the best player in the world? The next generation have a choice. Give in, listen to the critics, let them erode you down, or live and die by what you believe is the way to play. I think one of the one of the most compelling things about James as a leader of his team is he doesn't care. This is the best way he knows how to play Counter-Strike. This is the best way to win trophies. This is the best way to win championships. And this is the best way to put ourselves in a position to succeed and forget about everything else. Lean into the caricature. I think Kadian is, you know, with all with all the, the rock bottoms that he's hit throughout his career, I think he's really kind of manifested the idea of if you don't laugh, you'll cry. Or choose the inverse. I think Blameth is one of the first guys I encountered that has like different mindset of grinding. I think that he's really dedicated to his craft. I think Blame F has massive ego. You can kind of hear the confidence and the self-assuredness in his interviews and when he talks about the game of Counter-Strike, but I think he has, he has a healthy ego in the sense that it drives him to work so hard. A more risky path to travel. Admission here requires ego. At the end of the day, Blameth must prove on the server why his confidence is justified, and I think this new version of Astralis is a perfect opportunity for him to, to finally prove that. One shared goal, a choice of two roads. The arc of the anti-hero by no means over. Intel Extreme Masters Katowice is brought to you in part by Intel, Acer Predator, DHL, Monster Energy, the United States Air Force, and White Market. Still not quite done. He's 
he is going to take this fight, though. Three seconds left. Last two rounds of action has got to start in round three of C. And this is a massive move for Zest, but he's not content with just the Nexus kill. He the wants to win. Out. And it's all done. A trolling win. Unbelievable Rogue with a 4 0 victory over Classic. And they did it again in the Black Finals. It's the Hello and welcome to the Nintendo Extreme Masters 2024 in what is a very grey and rainy Katowice. But I'd like to start by telling you about Frederick Chopin. Now, he was a Polish composer and virtuoso pianist who started working when he was just seven years old. There is, of course, a reason why I've just told you that. It's because here in the Spodek today, we have our own virtuosos who are young, but they are hungry to prove that they can be the best on one of the biggest stage in all of esports. We also have their mentors. We have their sidekicks. We have the prodigies. And you know, this cultural opening wouldn't be right unless I had some sort of quote. And you know what? The players that we have on stage today, these young virtuosos, you could attribute the same quote to them as you could do to Chopin. His poetic genius was based on a professional technique that was without equal in his generation. Freya? Let the romantic era of Counter-Strike begin. But unfortunately for two teams yesterday, it was more like heartbreak as their concertos came to a close. Not a peep out of mouths, and unfortunately, Falcons saw no more. But that does tee us up, Trace, very nicely for today's grand final. Oh, absolutely does. It's a grand final. It's Katowice. It's going to be hot, to say the least. Quite literally. It gets scorching up on this stage. I'm talking 3,000 degrees Celsius when those nice little pyros go off when the bomb explodes. Look, Freya Fahrenheit, okay? It was invented by a man named Daniel Gabriel. Guess what? Fahrenheit was his last name. He was also Polish. And uh, he also invented the thermometer. Hang on, I got a thermometer right here. Yeah, he invented this too. You just carry that around with you, Trace? Yeah. Anyway, Counter-Strike, that's what's on the cards today. Yes. Not science, we're focused on video yeah. games today, Trace. Quick maths, and the maths tell me that we might not live in the Matrix, but Neo is definitely in the building. Speaking of temperature checks, the temperature check for Team Spirit yesterday was ice cold. In the interviews, they were telling me that stage does not scare them. They said they were going to play their game and it would go their way. And I thought, there's no way some of these young players can be saying yeah. But what happened? They delivered. They stepped up and performed. And now they're in the grand final, about to take on phase. This could be the greatest victory in the Counter-Strike history for Team Spirit since they started in 2016. This is a monumental win. And Donk may be the one leading the charge. He could be the youngest ever person to lift this trophy and the youngest ever MVP if they are able to clinch it. On top of that, you have to talk about the team performance that Spirit's been putting up. Zontix, he's one that's been delivering and even though his name goes under the shadows when you've got Shiro and Donk aside him, he's been able to have great performances and great impact the whole way through. And Chopper, well, this could be his black swan or will it be his swan song? A battle of the old guard versus the new. Hopefully coming together in a perfect symphony tonight. On the one side, it's FaZe Clan. They want to get that trophy back that they won here back in 2022. And they look poised. Frozen looking to unlock that next level in his career. Rain firing on all cylinders. Listen, playoffs phase is a different beast. But standing in between them and that trophy is Team Spirit. And nobody in Katowice has found answers for Donk yet. But who else than the maestro, Kerrigan, playing his fourth final here in Katowice in the Spodek today. He wants that trophy, but to do it, he has one hell of a problem to solve. Oh yes, it's been a challenge that Carrigan has summited before, but this time it's a very different game. Quite literally, we are here for the Intel Extreme Masters Katowice 2024. My name is Ferez Biz, joined down here for the pre-show by Maniac and Yanko. We have quite the best of five on our hands today, don't we? Yes, I think we have an absolute banger of a series, Freya, today for the grand final. Two of the teams that have played the best Counter-Strike for Spirit, that's been the case 
ever since they started in the play-in with a 13 open <laughs> over Apex. No. I think not, they were also there was a little bit of foreshadowing there. And for FaZe, of course, we had to wait until the stage to see them hit their peak. Uh, they, they want you to want them. That's what's happening. They tease you. They want you to get the best out of FaZe. Looking at the bracket, I think this is the sexiest grand final we could possibly get. I wouldn't have it any other way. And we should take a look at exactly how we got ourselves here because uh, you might be wondering where some of the bigger names are. I'm going to, unfortunately, ask you, Matthew, where the hell were Vital? in this playoff. Well, how, how long do you have? I mean, we could take a couple of hours to talk about this tragedy, of course. Vitality falling short, last place in the group stage. It was rough for them, uh, not in this group. That was Group B, but still worth a shot, worth talking about as well. You think the RMR coming up, the majors coming up, a whole lot of deep questioning will be made in the Vitality camp. You can see here being uh, on the losing side against Heroic. That was the first round of the lower bracket, and this was the biggest upset, the biggest letdown on the entire Katowice story. And dead last at that. It wasn't even like they got any kind of W under their belt. But we move on to talk a little bit about G2 because they found themselves in the quarterfinal, right? I thought that was going to be a series that set everything alight. But uh, G2 fell a little bit flat on that one. Yes, the final before the semi-final before the final. That's yeah, the defending champions fall in the quarterfinals. I think just G2 still not really ready to play with this roster. You know, individually they weren't on point as a team. They just got outplayed completely by FaZe, uh, which set them up for a semi-final berth against Maus. And then continuing the series of heartbreak, of course, Cloud9. I mean, mm -hmm. it's a team that I feel we've we've sort of given up, right? I, it, we don't treat the, the heartbreaks from Cloud9 with as much gusto and we, as we used to. You know what team Cloud9 reminds me of? Hit me. North. North? Oh, That's, a deep, That's like, a deep cut. That's a deep cut. Yes, because they, ha they have even much better players. But that was a team that just no matter what happens, they would fail. They would find <laughs> a new way to lose to a point where you just couldn't believe what's happening in front of your eyes, right? Like, even the Mouse series, like they had it. They were half a second away from getting into the next round. Instead, they lose, they drop to the lower bracket, and they're eliminated. I'm going to say that Cloud9 are even worse than Mouse, uh, even worse than North, because at least North won on land once. Throwback to Stockholm yes, 2018. Did how did we circle do back that? to no. MSLB and Sniper? How did we, how did we MVP walk winner it back? as well. Anyway, uh, should we take a look at what's on the line? Because, of course, we've got prize money. We've got a trophy. We've got a title. But we've also got a very important slot at the Intel Grand Slam, which for FaZe, this is hella important because you need to get one of these top-tier events to be, uh, you know, moving yourself forward and netting that Intel Grand Slam. Exactly. You need a championship-level event, which are I am Katowice and I am Cologne and any other three tournaments, right? And you can see here, we have four teams with one, five teams with one win, actually, but FaZe is the one who won the last one in Sydney, right? So here, if they are able to take down Spirit, all of a sudden, they only have two left, and it can be any two tournaments, and they will have eight more chances to win two. And imagine the level they would show, like if we're forecasting a victory of FaZe Clan here in Katowice, who's to say they're not favorite to show up at these events that Yenko is talking about, Chengdu, Pro League. I mean, they would be the team to take down. They could run it back and win Pro it League for again. the second time at Pro League, the Intel Grand Slam. Bring all of the golden bars on the table. The the absolute classic. But uh, yeah, that is what's on the line, of course, for Spirit. That would be the first notch on the Intel Grand Slam belt. But I, I think we should contextualize exactly the journey that some of these players have been on, right? Obviously coming into CS2, brand new iteration of the game, a team that we didn't expect necessarily to be making it to this grand final versus FaZe, who have been led by the helm by Carrigan, I would say, as you know, one of the biggest mentors of this space, particularly when we look at the narrative with Frozen, right? He promised him, if I have an opportunity to get you on a team, I will do that. And he lived up to his word. And listen, talk about having stamina in your career, right? We we are used to Carrigan being in winning ways in the last two years. You think about the double-double in 2022. There's trophy here in Katowice, in Cologne. There's a major coming out. But he had to go through so much. He was removed from teams. He had to go back to, he had to play in NA counter strike. He had to be an envious for a while in order to earn his spot again. And now within his face clan, he's got all of the pieces he needs. He brought Frozen from Mouse, as you mentioned, and everything is connecting and he's truly fulfilling this mentorship role that he's got. And I think also some of that roster building is down to him. I mean, one of the conditions he had coming to phase was that there will be a budget for transfers, right? And making things happen. And he managed to, you know, 2021 was ugly, but ever since that, ever since Rops joined the lineup, phase has been a contender team. They won Katowice Cologne and a major in the same year. Mm. Never been done before in history of Counter-Strike. And yeah, just an incredible job uh, in Kerrigan's second stint with phase Club. And on the other side of the server, we have Chopper, who's been, you know, a mainstay of the Spirit roster for what, five years? 
years now. It's kind of crazy to look at his tenure, which is why I've classified him as the everyman. You know, it doesn't make his achievements any less incredible, but he is resourceful, he's determined, and he's incredibly loyal to this roster. What an absolute grind it's been for Chopper to try to earn his tribe in the CIS region and in Counter-Strike as a whole. It's like he just wakes up every morning, goes and hit the goddamn cardio again and again and again every day. From Vega Squadron to Spirit to another type of Spirit, having players coming in and out for the longest time, being a captain whose best players are going to be poached, whose best players are going to leave you because it feels like there is a ceiling. And maybe, just maybe now, he's starting to sort of flip the conversation. Hey, maybe my team is the one you want to join. Look at the players I have now. I am the golden spot. I am the golden goose. Come to me. The snappy of the CIS scene, in a way, right? Always had to do more with less and finally has some amazing pieces around it and we can see what it leads to. Let's talk Orpers for a second. Brokey, the straight shooter, both outside the game and inside the server. You know, you ask him a question, you get the honest response from him. And, and a very brief one at that. Yeah, yeah, general. he keeps things, you know, clean. Um, and inside the server, I mean, he's been delivering on all fronts, right? You know, we have our friend Maui who loves to call the phase procrastinator. I would say Brokey's a procrastinator. Like, he literally illustrates this idea where you can see him go missing throughout an entire group stage. You don't even mention his name. You don't really know what's going on. And there's going to be these peak moments in playoffs where he shows up massively and you're like, oh, right, that's Brokey. But I forgot about it. MVP in Katowice 2022, he's been showing up once again in the group stage and he was instrumental in some of the victories, putting FaZe on that track to the grand final. And I think it's also the versatility of FaZe that makes them so dangerous. You know, on a team that has Rops, that has now Frozen, Rain, even Carrigan, how much space are you going to have to go for play? Sometimes you just have to not necessarily do what you're told, but kind of play standard, play off of your teammates. And that's why Brokey isn't always in the spotlight. But usually when he plays well, that's when FaZe goes on to lift the trophy. In the and end. think about him being, you know, the 2022 MVP of this very tournament. What arc he's had since then. Obviously now still on the same roster, but that was such a that was such a statement game for him, right? It was, and one of the reasons is the whole stand-in situation. So everything was a little bit more chaotic. FaZe's game was more chaotic and Brocky naturally just thrives in the chaos as a player. It's more about when things are calmer, yeah. also finding ways to have impact and to deliver. I feel like it also transpires within the server. Like whenever it's chaotic situation, there's a smoke to be crossed, there's a fast scope to be found. Broke is your man. Shiro on the other side of things. Um, we've branded him as the comeback kid because let's be honest, guys, when we saw him leaving Cloud9, joining Spirit, a lot of us were thinking, why are you taking that risk, dude? I mean, listen, Cloud9 was a disappointment. I, I'm just going to put it out there. When when the roster was put together and then Electronic and Perfecto joined and you had this Shiro, Axile, Hobbits combination, we thought, holy hell, we are looking at the next best team in the world. The trophies are going to come raining in. It's going to be beautiful. Nothing turned. Nothing transpired at all. Huge disappointment. And for him, it's been a story trying to redeem himself already from the previous roster. So I think comeback is, is accurate. I just think the comeback just barely started. He didn't leave for spirit. He just didn't want to be in Cloud9 anymore. That's how bad things got. He didn't have, you know, an offer waiting for Spirit and that was going to be the move. He just benched himself and waited to see what happens. I'm out. I think looking <laughs> at, you know, that Cloud9 lineup and how good they were during the online era while they were Gambit and then, you know, not really being able to translate that into LAN, Shiro was under so much stress and pressure. I mean, come on. The guy was had tears in his eyes doing a live game. That's how difficult things were. And you can see him now in spirit. He's having fun again. He's enjoying Counter-Strike and competition. And he is still, I think, third, fourth, fifth rated, the highest rated player of this tournament. Didn't feel like he was doing all that That's much, right. to be honest. He's just like doing his job chilling and Spirit is playing so well as a team that for him it's a completely different environment to be in and now he's in the grand final of a championship level event. And we're getting to witness that comeback arc, you know, happen before our very eyes, which is a kind of a similar situation for Rain. Not exactly with the comeback narrative, but this is an opportunity to either redeem himself for being absent, obviously not his fault. He did hey, it was not his fault. Uh, back when tested. they lifted the trophy in 2022, or it's going to be a tragic end because he's been so, so close. He was part of that squad, but he yeah. wasn't one to be having his hands on that trophy two years ago. And I think the whole idea of comeback also applies to Rain in a grander scheme of things when you think about what online Counter-Strike did to him and on the offset of that online Counter-Strike period, he was one of the names that we wanted to see out of phase. People were calling for his name. Very obviously a lack of motivation at the time. His level drops a little bit. You're already thinking in the future. You're thinking, hey, Frozen might replace Rain at some point earlier than when that happened. And then the land comes back, the, the 
sort of big stage game kicks in again, and this is where you get to see what he's made of. Once again, truly shining in very intense moments. What, the third map that we just witnessed, like the second map we witnessed against Valve, crazy as well here. He had an incredible uh, ancient performance, and it is, at this point in time, it's not coincident anymore. Like, we know he shows up. We know these moments are where he strikes and where he shines, and that in itself is a comeback. One of the absolute best teammates you can have, and an ice cold player. He will play the same no matter the situation, no matter how big the stage is, and that's just such a great thing to have um, as a coach. And extremely selfless as well. That's one of the points we mentioned. If someone is being brought in and there needs to be a tiny few adjustments here and there just to make sure that player, frozen in this case, is comfortable, rain is never going to be a problem. So, yep, uh, whatever, I'm going to do it. Whatever you need from me, whatever role, whatever position, more passive, more aggressive. Hell, he plays B on overpass now. He used to be A the whole time. He literally sort of invented the meta to be aggressive with the rifle now he's like ah, i'm gonna play behind this pillar and it's fine he doesn't make a fuss about it he just gets the job done and this is where the head to get to gets very interesting when we bring in the spirit side of the equation because who else could it be than the donkmeister in that entry role we heard it from him not one two times he wants to take down rain again on this big stage today yanko yes uh, indeed and i mean we are witnessing history in the making here with this kid and, and spirit. I mean, yes. the 1.63 rating so far in this tournament, the next closest debut big event is at like 1.21 or something like that. I mean, Same. over 100 ADR, almost two impact on top. Of, the only thing you can point out is one, this yesterday was his first, you know, match on the stage. Was it any different? No. It wasn't, absolutely not. And I know we're, everybody's so eager to throw all of the accolades at him, and I'm one of them too. I'm ready to jump on that hype. But when it comes to the eye test, when it comes to the feeling of watching Donk play, it truly seems like he's one of these generational geniuses, as in, there's been Simple, there's been Zaiwu, and now there's Donk. There are three players in the history, or in my recent histories of Counter-Strike, who have given me that feeling when you were watching them play, thinking, wait a minute, like this, this guy is doing something I haven't thought about, I didn't think was possible, and he's making it flawlessly without any problem. Plus, it's with the rifle. It's not an opera out there. There's been plenty of opera. Simple, Zaiwu, Manasi, these snipers who have bended the rules of Counter-Strike. Not the case for this man over there. It's a rifle. And so far, he's passed every test. It was okay. A big event. Gets it done. Top 15, nine Navi comes in, done, phase, done. Stage, Falcons, I mean, okay, Falcons are not a great team right now, right? Mm. But they are a stage team. They are the ones with those experienced players. Didn't matter, and it's kind of fitting that it's a rematch against FaZe in a best of five, the sort of final boss awaits. But so far, we have no reason to believe he's going to play any different or that it's going to impact him in any way. I love how he gave us some honesty yesterday as well, because we asked him, you know, did you get a little bit nervous? Surely, surely you felt some butterflies in your tummy before you walked on stage. And he was like, yeah, of course I did. Anybody would. But when he put the headset on, when you get fully in the zone, didn't matter for him. Somebody else that that's true for is Frozen. We call him the young veteran, which is very true when he was back on the Mao squad. But, you know, this is a very different iteration, a very different evolution of Frozen coming into this phase team. I agree with you, and I, I think the term applied to Mao's Frozen, it doesn't apply in phase anymore, because he is definitely in a new chapter of his career. His his archetype sort of changed as he put on the phase jersey, but so did the expectations, right? I think he created a lot of conversation around him. Where do we rate him? How do we value him as a rifle? Does he have a ceiling? And some of the way out was saying, well, listen, his, his team is not going good enough. He doesn't have the supporting cast. They are all crumbling in high tense moment. So that's why he's, now he's got everything he needs. He's got incredibly experienced players, people who have won, who are continuing to win. And he's got the chance to put all of the doubts to bed today. He's in the leading in terms of MVP race for his team. Would he succeed here? That would be finally this championship event that he's been looking for. I mean, it's almost as big of a contrast as you can have going from one of the youngest tier one teams to one of the oldest and most experienced, right? So the environment changes completely you're surrounded by players who know how it is to play big games and again when you know you it's not up to you to carry the team yeah. like you just need to do your job it releases such a huge weight off your so shoulders uh, somebody that I thought was a little bit older, speaking of age, than he was, uh, Magix. Uh, I feel like he's been Chopper's sidekick for such a long time. Then I realized this kid's only 20 years old. Like, he's been, you know, a name that we've had on the tip of our tongue. And I feel like that loyalty for the side of Team Spirit is paying off because this roster, this has got to be the best he's ever played with, right? Oh, yeah, definitely. And he's gone through thick and thin uh, on that Spirit jersey as well with Chopper, so many different lineups. And maybe I'm just realizing some comparison 
Raven can be drawn to Rain in the sense of Majestic's just gonna do what's needed. And there's no, oh, it doesn't feel like there is a whole amount of ego that's going into it where he's gonna stand his ground and say, no, listen, this is what I wanna play. We're gonna do it my way or the highway. It's not what's happening with him. He's very serviceable. He's very gullible in what he needs to do within the team. And that has such high value because he can do the, the dirty work, the work that we don't get to talk about too, too much because the numbers are a little bit more tempered. But you know, believe you me, how important he is currently within this spirit sort of puzzle for everything to work. I think the most so on the CT side, like he's the B anchor or, you know, the small side anchor on all of these maps for Team Spirit. And he's just been tremendous also holding and playing more passive, but more so on those information aggressive plays when, when Spirit is trying to do something, he's just been a force to be reckoned with. Yeah, I mean, when you put a chair in front of him as well, he says, how hard do you want me to flip that chair, Machu? Maybe right. he, 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 just, the stage he just got influenced by Trace. That's what happened. I don't yeah, think he wanted yeah, to sorry, flip that chair. Sorry, Majex. Uh, let's talk about the final player on the side of FaZe. That is, of course, Rops. I think we can term him as kind of the CS2 mastermind, the biggest nerd of Counter-Strike 2 since its inception, right? Because he's been looking at the code. He's been cracking it. He's been breaking it. He's been innovating uh, in this new iteration of CS. He was definitely instrumental when CS2 came around because the way he approached it was the healthiest, most optimized way possible. He just say, yeah, the game isn't perfect, but I'm about to learn the hell out of that game. I'm going to learn every single crack and nuke, every single tricks I can put to the table. I am going to set trends on how to play my positions, and he did so beautifully. And obviously, it helped FaZe get that head start. But I got to say, it's been a bit of a moderated ROPS that we are seeing right now. Where, where are all the threads about he's the best CS2 player in the world? Like, I feel for seven weeks, that's all I could read everywhere. And he's been a little bit more tame, so maybe he's also trying to find his groove within this new phase with Frozen coming in. Whatever. He said that the roles haven't exactly changed for him, but maybe the way the team evolves or plays or behaves is a little different and he's got to adapt to it. Because I don't think we're seeing peak Robs quite yet. And, and that could be a terrifying prospect, actually, if you're, if you're going up against him. Yeah, exactly. I don't think he can stay dormant for much longer. You expect him to step up now in the grand final. Well, hey. The, the update was out for 12 hours, the last one. Rops already came up with two different pistols that FaZe was using where he buys a Zeus. They work both times. He's even looking at the pixel in HUD. So what's the <laughs> furthest away he can stand that's going to guarantee a kill? And it's always great to have a player like, like that on your team. He's proven time and time again as well on the big stage. He's a great player and it's going to be fun watching go up against Spirit today. The final player on the side of Team Spirit is, of course, Zontic. So why would Brand is kind of the unsuspecting hero? He even said it in a HLTV interview you yesterday he said you know i don't care if people aren't talking about me as long as we're winning trophies i do not give a shit you know what i loved the most in that interview with james uh on the stage right before the game against falcons talking about being nervous on the stage what will be different he's saying well i actually just thought about it like what will actually be different is there a reason for me to feel nervous like and logically i couldn't find a reason so I don't think I'll be nervous, which is just for such a young player and inexperienced to have that process is amazing. And in that Falcons game, he was very impactful, doing a great job anchoring uh, the bomb sides, CT and T sides. And yeah, I'm just impressed by him. He has definitely been the silent yeah. star of this team. Oh, definitely. I mean, there's only so many words we can use in the segment and so much light we can shed on a team. So he's kind of third in that sort of line and order. And I think it's a bit criminal. But what he's doing is very impressive with Spirit. You're right, talk about the resilience for him to just and it's not only just the amount of kills, it's where and when he gets these kills. There were a few moments in that Falcons game where the round is on a knife's edge. And it's basically, you either get two kills right now or the round is lost. And he gets these two kills. And maybe at the very end, it's only 14, it's only 15. But you can retrace back to these moments and you know why they won it. And I think he's he's a guy whose nerves are tested a lot in these situations. And he steps up most of the time. Well, we've been talking about heroes, but I believe we do have a legend from the past that we can be checking in with, courtesy of James Banks. Nice stairs, you, you remember these, right? Yeah, man, the best stairs. When you're preparing here, it's one of the hell moments, you know. Oh, yes, a very special moment. But it's been five months since we've seen you compete, mate, back at the EPL Season 18 Grand Finals you were in. How's the time off been? Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. I was waiting for an event like Katowice because uh, that, that was very hard to find 
really beautiful matches and this event is surprising me with the way how everyone plays okay. and a new game so it's much better to see you. and especially from here finally I'm gonna watch a final yeah. as a guest <laughs> <laughs> you get to enjoy and watch it all go down I want to touch on your opinions on CS2 though because when it first came out you were not so happy with it but it's progressed a bit there's been some updates so what do you think of it now yeah I feel the last update uh, was that new case the where they changed white peak. I feel like it, it's the best update that, that they can ever made. And uh, I even wrote it in Twitter, like, I'm happy with this update. Nice. Because, uh, like, I wasn't playing a lot for the last month, okay. uh, but all of the players were saying, like, it's, uh, it was even too hard with Zop to kill a white peak guy. So yeah. let's see how it goes now. Onwards and upwards and progression is what we want to see here. But you've also been busy outside of the server. You've launched All Stars Promotions with yeah. your brother, and this is an educational project. So what yeah. more can you tell us right now? Uh, it's just going to be really nice courses uh, where everyone can teach, play casually, and uh, even if they want professionally. And uh, there's going to be tournaments as well. There's going to be giveaways and all of this stuff. And uh, I'm pretty sure, as I said before, that's going to change CS industry because people, um, they will play much better, much better, and it's going to be much harder to play against them in uh, any competition, in any casual games. Yeah. Could it help me, because I'm still very bad? Yeah, of course, I'll give you a free course, yeah. <laughs> hey, we'll take that, we'll, we'll clip that, we know that's what's going to go down. For you, though, being at Katowice, right, and seeing this all again, has it given you that thing of like, okay, I want to be on this stage, I want to play? Uh, a bit, yeah. When I, I came here uh, between Ants and Falcons, the third map, there were so many people and I was enjoying it a lot. Yeah. Like, um, I'm not saying I had goosey bumps, you know, yeah. but uh, it was so beautiful to watch, so beautiful to see it uh, in crowd and just enjoy. The goosebumps come when you're on the stage playing again. And I want to know this, Sasha. I think the whole world, the whole community wants to know this. When are you coming back? Are you coming back? Uh, I hope after major, because I mean, I'm a sixth player for Navi yeah. on this major. But uh, I hope nothing is going to happen with their roster because they were practicing really hard uh, after I took break. And uh, yeah, I just want them to progress and let's see what's going to happen after Major. Now you mentioned Navi though. Are you happy with where you've seen them go? Because obviously the transition to the international team has been quite hard, right, for sure. But Alexi seems to be leading very well. Wonderful's performing. We're seeing improvements. Yeah, a lot of improvements. And I was actually surprised how Wonderful going to adjust. And I see that he's doing uh, good games, you know. He's showing his uh, skills. And yeah, as, as always, you need always more time, especially uh, when Wonderful came, and I see their progression. I was a bit frustrated when they didn't make playoffs, yeah. but uh, it's it's just just the beginning. I mean, I'm pretty sure they have a high ceilings for uh, major. Like, I don't want to say this tournament is not prestigious because this tournament is insane tournament, yeah. but still everyone's going to aim in as a major and Always after majors happening, some roster changes. And uh, yeah, I mean, I wish them good luck and I'm gonna watch every game like I did before. Oh yeah, so I see you posting on Instagram, right? You're still in your jersey, you're watching, you're supporting them. <laughs> Lastly, Sasha, anything you wanna say to all the fans out there because they are missing you, that's for sure. Yeah, guys, thank you everyone who's still watching Counter-Strike. I know that uh, we are all waiting for updates all the time, but trust me, if it's not about you, if it's not about everyone who's watching in front of the screens, not everyone, not about, I mean, people who's here as well, trust me, it's a huge crowd and atmosphere is always, always better and better. No matter what kind of uh, version of CS we're gonna play, we should always support this game and uh, I hope you will have a nice time. Counter-Strike forever, that's what it is. Let's see Simple back on the server, hopefully soon. Nice one, mate. My friends, to the Cathedral of Counter-Strike! Elevate, yeah. level up, wait to the top, hit it to the peak. All them boys want to talk, hit them out of love, but don't got receipts. I ain't gonna lose it, lose it now. Gotta keep it moving, lose it now. Smokes, see a double smokes in the same place there, simple, just jumping casually into the side. Wait, 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 what, 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 what was that? Never miss a play again. That's simple, it's not allowed, this is not FPL, this is a major. Finally.
With Face It Watch, you're in control. Switch between player POVs live and see the game through the eyes of any pro. Never miss a moment with replays. Relive each highlight on demand from all angles. Watch it, control it, face it. Zone 6, how are we doing today before the grand final? As, as always. <laughs> You told me yesterday in the interview, right, you said, okay, you are not going to feel any different. You know, if you guys play your own game, it'll work that way. It certainly did. But did you enjoy it all? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> it was better than Face It. <laughs> Definitely a lot better than Face It. What have you guys done today, though, to prepare for the grand final differently? Because you've already faced Phase before. Mm, I cannot say. Like, we, we prepared, like, as always, you know, nothing, nothing new. Okay, you prepare as always. It seems to work out for you guys. You already beat FaZe once before. How different do you think it will be, though, on the stage? We know they are a stage team. They love it. Like, I, I don't know. I don't know. We'll just play. Like, I, I think if we'll play our game, we'll win. That, that's it. The same answer as yesterday. Okay, so we're going to win this final no matter what, right? Just play your game. Yeah. That's it. All right, Zontix, good luck, man. <laughs> Hello, Neo. Hello. Um, welcome to uh, the Spodek for the final, which I can only imagine is a very special and overwhelming feeling knowing that 10 years ago here today, you lifted that trophy. Yeah, it's a uh, dreams coming true, you know. Uh, I've always dreamed of uh, coming back to Spodek. It never happened, uh, never as a player. So I'm very happy to be here again. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be a very fun game to be part of. A fun game, perhaps a difficult one, of course. Team Spirit has been playing incredibly. And I was talking to Zonic yesterday, and he said it's a hard one as a coach because they play so instinctively, so viscerally. Yeah, that's true. I mean, they've been the underdog of the tournament, uh, it felt like. And uh, they got the potential to be among the top teams, uh, definitely. And uh, it's not going to be an easy one. They play very well. and uh, uh, But it's, uh, you know, the stage games, we always... Uh, play kind of differently on these ones and uh, guys are very experienced and uh, yeah, we'll see what it is. Yeah, exactly. And a playoff phase is a different beast. They've got you behind them now as well in front of this arena. Um, but tell me about the donk problem. Uh, it seems like the key is to focus on them, but not too much, right? Because it is about um, the team as a cohesive against him and the team. Yeah, I mean, uh, CS is a team game, so the team has to be well structured so the star players can shine and uh, that's what happens here they play very well as a team it's not only donk it's you know shiro and the uh, chopper digl is an experienced uh, guy and uh, he knows his stuff so uh, yeah we just we don't focus so much on donk it's just you know the whole uh, team structure and uh, we'll see how it is absolutely good luck thank you We've heard from Neo, and now we get ready to take on the grand finals of the 98th Intel Extreme Masters. Welcome back. Hey, Karavitsa, Jin Dobre, how you doing? Yeah, they're here, and they want to watch some Counter-Strike. Yanko here in the middle, Maniac down on the end. Uh, a day of celebration, but also going to be a day of heartache and triumph. 98th IM, what a crazy Wild, number right? that is. And to think of the history that is already within Spodek 10 years ago, Neo lifting that trophy, and the electricity remains the same, the prestige even higher. And it will be remembered as the first one where we had Donk, you know, history in the making here. But yeah, I think an absolutely amazing grand final that we have ahead of us. Two of the teams that have played the best Counter-Strike so far in the tournament. So many storylines, right? Old versus new, phase back on the big stage. I just can't wait to get it started. Which is exactly where I want to start this conversation around phase clan. How they got back in here into the Spodic into the grand finals. Let's talk about that journey, Maniac. Well, listen, what we usually say about phase that the hardest part is to get to the stage. Right? They will show weaknesses here and there, and I think the game versus Eternal Fire sort of encompasses that idea. It's not the best phase, but once they hit playoff, G2 had to suffer the law of phase and sort of the monsters that they become when they set foot here in Spodek. So you can never really discard them. You have to realize you're looking at a phase clan who in CS2 has a 100% grand final appearance rate. Like basically, that's the worst they do. Is kind of unheard of. Final. Kind of unheard of. And I think the, the what's 
speaks enough of it is you just compare the groups to the playoffs. You know, you look at groups, they beat Rebels, they beat Eternal Fire, and then lose to Spirit, right, 2-0. So you're not too impressed. But then in the playoffs, a completely different story. And the eye test really tells you that FaZe is playing the best Counter-Strike up there with Spirit once we get to this stage of the tournament. And this is not just any phase. We're talking about a phase with a gentleman named Frozen, all right? So instead of us talking about Frozen, I'd rather, rather hear what Frozen has to say to us. Frozen, uh, it's about time to play your Intel Extreme Masters Katowice Finals. I mean, it's insane. Your performance has been really good, but I'd love to know from you how you reflect on how you've done on this stage so far. Very comfortable. Uh, yeah, feels amazing. I mean, maybe I had a little doubts coming in, you know, uh, against G2 it was my first game in this uh, in this arena. But uh, yeah, I mean, I think just from the moment I sat down, I felt uh, very comfortable at the server. And uh, yeah, it just feels amazing. When it's a part of, if you're part of FaZe, I guess there's a playoffs buff. We see that always when FaZe gets into those playoffs. Maybe you can tell me now that you're part of it, what changes in the atmosphere or the approach of the team that makes you so on point? I think in terms of atmosphere, we're just getting way more calmer. And uh, I don't know what is it about the phase, bu phase uh, crowd buff, but uh, I don't know, once we are at the stage, it, uh, it feels way different. People are, you know, I think there's just a different mindset. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I can't tell you the secret. Uh, you are going up against Team Spirit. You are one of the only teams that gets the rematch. You know, usually the team is just out after facing them. So how much can you realistically change knowing that they have such a unique and such an aggressive style of playing CS? Yeah, I mean, they beat us earlier in this tournament. Um, I mean, they know how we play, we know how they play. And uh, I think today is going to be a little different since, you know, we are playing in the arena. There is probably a little bit more on the line than there was uh, in the match before. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I expect a great game. I think they are playing very well. I mean, we are also playing pretty well. So yeah, I think it's going to be a grand final. And you know, I have to ask you, everyone's been focusing on Donkin. When it comes to you, you're actually probably going to be involved in a lot of the moments where you have to take the duels with him. I talked to Zonic yesterday and he said the most frustrating thing is that not only do we not win the opening duel, specifically when they're on T, but then we also don't get the, th the trades. So I'm wondering what the approach can be. I mean, when they beat us earlier in the tournament, it, I think that was the case that they really were sharper that day. Um, yeah, I think we're just not just not there, but uh, I mean, just comparing the other matches we played here the other day, I think uh, we're coming sharp today. And uh, yeah, it's going to be a different game. I agree. Good luck. You've got to come in here sharp. You've got to come in here with a flow state. And also that flow state you just kind of talked about a little bit, Maniac. And that is the idea that FaZe Clan only know finals in CS2. That's right. And listen, Frozen A is going to be a topic. Him joining FaZe is the definition of a win-win for multiple reasons. Obviously, for him individually, he's been a little bit bottlenecked in that mouse jersey for quite a long time. We were wondering where is this, the reach, where is the ceiling for Frozen. But look at the, the other way. Look at FaZe having this injection of motivation and having someone young come in and say, listen, guys, yeah, you're cool. I I can see what you've been doing, but this is the counter strike I want to play. This is what I bring to the table, and I think this was very much needed. A phase clan that has been prone to being a little bit fatigued that time, maybe motivation has been an issue. Frozen, he's got bucket loads of motivation. So Kerrigan and Rain have won some trophies for phase, it would seem. Yeah, I mean, that was close to, what, 50 grand final appearances wow. between the two of them, a lot of trophies, and absolutely, in 2022, when Rops originally joined the team, they went on to win Katowice Cologne in the major, right? And Frozen joining now might be that exact same catalyst. They're already in the grand final in Katowice. He's an amazing player, fits into the lineup really well. And it's that wealth of experience that mm. doesn't change anything for FaZe. From Frozen's interview, you know, we're on the stage, there's a buff. The reason is they are just 10% sharper. The decision making is a little bit better. There's no panic for them. Like this is what they're used to playing at and for some of the other teams especially the younger teams it's everything is new right yes. you start panicking you start maybe going for more plays on your own instead of doing it calm playing together the crowd can get to you all of that stuff and for phase that's why they do their best work in the playoffs yeah and uh it's the most exciting time to watch a phase clan. you know sometimes it is fun to watch them in group stage maybe fumble a bag here or there but then you kind of realize hey they might they might just work this out Yes, definitely. And I think as a player, I can tell you from experience, when you step on the stage, if you do not know about yourself within that environment, the little fight or flight is still a question. Like, am I going to be able to handle it? How am I going to behave? Am I going to sustain the pressure? But when you're frozen and now you're within that team, you know for a fact that you have people to your left and to your right that you can trust.
trust. They're going to do what they need to do. They're going to take the jewels they have to. They give you the comms. Imagine that luxury that is to know yourself, to know what you're capable of here, and to be able to feed off that energy. We know the crowd is going to be with them. They are a huge crowd favorite, and they know how to use it. And that is why they're the ultimate boss to play here in Spodek. I just saw one of the DHL signs says Kara Goat. Man, it's, it's got a nice ring to it. It does kind of stand out a little bit. You talk about young guns and what's on the other side, the mirror image over there on the server. We're talking about Team Spirit. How did they do it? How did they get here? <laughs> I, well, I mean, they started with a 13-0 against Apex in the play and probably should have, you know, catch, catched up on what was going to happen in this yes. tournament. But the first test comes against Navi, top five team in the world. That's the only map they've lost in this tournament. And it was a 13-11, mm -hmm. you know, going all the way down to the wire, beat phase in the groups, different environment. And then against Falcons, who sure isn't a great team at this moment in time, but has a lot of experienced veteran players, a lot of big stage players. They just disposed of them real quick. Oh, definitely. And listen, we've been in this business for a while. Our hearts have been broken a couple times so now in every new relationship we take our time we don't really know if we're going to give our trust first you have to convince us take us to dinner a couple times that's what happened with spirit every single test we said okay that's great but what about against this team oh, that's fine what about against this one? Oh, you beat face but you were in group stage go on stage go up against the likes of some pious who knows and can play the stage oh hold on a minute you beat them again and now we have the final step the final dessert that's face the grand final step even i i love what you did there also dating and advice with Matthew. How do they find you, Matthew? Oh, you can hit me on Twitter, Maniac <laughs> underscore CSGO. I'll help you if I can. Yeah. Uh, CSGO. So your spirit and phase is the guy they told you not to worry about? Oh, oh Jesus <laughs> Christ. That got started. That's, that's, okay. Oh okay. We'll reset here. Let's talk a little bit about the spirit side of things. And, well, their appearances and finals are lack therein. Obviously, it's going to be a very contrasted image to what we see uh, from the side of phase. But if we look at the spirit <laughs> thing, yeah. I mean, it just paints. You know, the picture says more than a thousand words. And look at it. It's not even about trophies. It's, it's just finals. Yes. appearances, right? How many did Kerrigan have? 26, Rain had 23. They only have three combined. And that all comes from Shiro, who also yeah. didn't have an amazing time in those finals. I will add on that there should be probably uh, the Dubai Grand Final against VP that's in there. It wasn't counted as a big event, but they did play a best of five here and they prevailed. Against VP. Against VP, and they come back from 0-2. So there's a little bit of experience, but we're not going to play the game of comparison. Of course, FaZe have them completely booked, and we are still yet to, to see how you behave in elite events here in Spodek. That's the first time they play in an arena like this. Questions galore. How does the spirit behave in the server? I mean, mainly on Anubis against Falcons. That's the thing, Trace. We're talking about you know, their nerves or whatnot, the stage, they just focus on the Counter-Strike, right? And we've been painting the picture this whole tournament that it's more than just the individuals, right? That's it's right. about they, their team play. And we've shown how they're setting up Donk on the T side. I want to focus up a little bit on the CT side from their game against Falcons, right? So this is in the second half, a gun round. Falcons just opened with some pressure towards A. Might have even been a little bit of an A rush from this utility, but, you know, the Molotov from Zontix, I think they just extinguish the Molly with the smoke here to bait out some more utility or make Spirit rotate, right? So that's the opening of the round, pretty standard. Spirit is in a 3-1-1 setup. So now I want you to look at the mid round. What happens? There's one minute left, and this is something that Spirit has struggled. This is why they lost the game to Na'Vi. It was this mid round, they were too static, right? So it's a three guys towards the B-bomb side. Chopper is on mid, Zontix is on A. Watch what happens now. Chopper, he's going to smoke mid at the one minute mark. Zontix swings out to smoke A main. Why is this happening? now you'll see why because on B they're making a play right this is exactly when Magisk and Donk are setting up Shiro is going to flash them out they're being proactive they're gaining information right they find the kill they're gonna nade snappy as well and you can see what that does to Falcons as these kills are happening towards B you can see the two guys peeking look at just the Falcons players, they're stuck. They can't, they want to go. They want to go A at this point. That's the natural reaction, but they have to hesitate because of the smoke. They don't know what's behind it. It only takes a couple of seconds because they realize, hey, there's nothing else. We, can, we have to go for it. But this is where Zontix is also gets the sound cue. He's confident because of the smoke. He's in good position. Now the individual prowess comes in. Now comes the multi-kill from Zontix. Now comes Donk on the rotation. The rotation is so fast because they are the ones 
dictating the pace of the game. They're the ones who are making plays. That's almost like a tease, like the sides were yeah. switched. They're the aggressors, and they're always in the right spot at the right time. And so much needs to go right in order for this entire move to work. You need to hit the right timing on that information play on B. You need to have that anchor of Zontix not only staying alive, but getting a multi-kill, buying time for Dong to join, and it was a masterpiece. And I'm sure, Trace, we have plenty of these examples of how good Counter-Strike they've been playing, because it hasn't been just individual. Yeah, and you know, the thing about us painting this picture, kind of like illustrating it this way, is it, it's a lot easier when you guys are telling the story like that, but perhaps you want to see some things uh, from a different POV, your favorite player's POV, which is exactly what I'm going to tell you about Face It Watch. You can watch all the POVs there. Nothing will be spared, Yanko. Absolutely. I mean, I've used it because you can just watch Donk the whole game around next to the to the mainstream, and it's been really fun to watch him just destroying people. Donk, man, I wish I could have just watched his game, actually. that's my, I might just do that. Yeah, I think you're going to have to, because if he keeps doing what he's been doing up here, I mean, what's the sky's the limit? It's probably the easiest way to go about it, right, Maniac? Oh, yeah, that's correct. Like, I mean, we talked about it in the pre-show He's a generational genius. That's, that's the caliber of player we're looking at. And we just have to keep in mind, we might be witnessing the first few steps of what is going to be a historic career, but we have to bide our time. We have to be a little patient. Now, listen, this is a rematch that we're talking about here. There was already an instance of FaZe versus Spirit. What is very interesting about this first map that they played was that FaZe had the great start. 5-0 start on the CT side. They put Spirit in their little boots and Donk was sort of contained for quite a while. So there were quite a, a lot of win conditions that was in favor of FaZe, that wasn't enough. It was actually the first time they got tested. Up until this game, we were saying every T side, Spirit starts 5-0, 4-1, 5-1, right? They're playing from ahead, and that's much easier to do. Can they pull it off? with a 0-5 start, and that's when this Mirage game comes into play. Well, let's look at this Mirage game. Everyone loves Mirage, so. Listen, outside for just a, a Mirage conversation, what I wanted to talk about here is the problem solving from Spirit when things get a little complicated, right? We're talking about a scoreline here. It's 0-5 or 5-0 in favor of FaZe, and we have our little friend here, the Prodigy Donk. He's on 2-5, and five, so he's not having the greatest of time. And so what Chopper is going to do here is elaborate a plan with it being on the losing side. A little bit of fake map control here and a timing. So we're going to let the round being played out. It it is a complicated situation to be in when you're down 05 because that's more, by the way, is just tripping out that completely. Was cool. That's pretty crazy. <laughs> Sonic Tornado move here. We see here the, the problem solving from Chopper. What does he do? He fakes the map control with a little bit of activities. There's two smokes being deployed. He's waiting for the right time. He's got a teammate as well in the magics towards Catwall. And when they feel it, they have this double timer apps ready to pounce. Shiro here grabs the kill. Here, don't die first, but there's a second lure that coming in behind. And he gives enough space in order for Robs to lose track of it. And that is pretty rare for Robs to lose track. The utilities are still completely spinning out of control. That's great, by the way. I love this little trigger effect. It's but like this... a new uh, curveball, if you will. Yeah, exactly. Like you ever seen the movie rain. Wanted? They just... Yeah, that's exactly, exactly what that is. That's exactly okay. what's happening. And this, from this moment on, this is where Chopper sort of unlocks the counter and finds so many different ways to win round. And this is very valuable to me, how they were able to solve that. And that's a high pressure round. Utility was low for Spirit from the get-go, so it's sort of an all-in play. And another thing that you saw there, Zontex, with another strong play as that second lurk from May Abs gets two crucial mm. kills and swings the round in Spirit's favor. Yeah, and for Spirit's favor, luckily they have this next gentleman on their team. And by that, I mean he's doing everything he can to prove us all wrong and saying that at one point he will be stopped. His name's Donk. Let's hear what he's got to say. It's redonkulous what's going on right now because this man has been lighting up the server. I want to ask you, though, the game versus Falcons, it looked easy and fun for you, was it? Not easy, but really fun. Really fun. Yeah. And the crowd yesterday, there were some boos for Spirit, right? There were more for Falcons. Do you care? No, I think we all, all my team don't care it about it. Yeah. Now, Katowice, winning this event would make you the youngest player to have ever lifted the trophy, and you would be the youngest MVP to win. And right now, your rating is insane. Does it sit in your mind? Do you think about it? Do you want it? I want to just uh, win a trophy, but uh, I don't care about some MVP or something like this. I just want to win. That's it. Why don't you care about the MVP? Because uh, uh, the team achievements are uh, much better than the individual. I like it. Smart young man. I like that a lot. Now for FaZe, they could not stop you when you played them in the group stage. How do you think it will be different this time? Do you think they would have made changes? Yeah, they. Uh, I don't know really, but I think they will do some changes. But uh, it's a different game because it's on stage and grand final, so it will be something different than was in the studio. 
But you're ready for it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And he's smiling as well. Let's see if Faze can stop the donk or if he'll be lifting that trophy. Uh, being ready for it is one thing, but how could you possibly be ready for this? He had an incredible opening game against Falcons on the T side. Just look at the perspective from his opponents for all of his opening kills. So many of these rounds, you don't even have a chance. I know, it's actually the time to kill is so crazy, and he's definitely one that has mastered Hello. that counter strafe, just wide swing. Yeah, exactly. Hello, that's exactly what's happening. And it's been time and time again, he's been taking these risks, he's been scaling properly, he's been using the utility they put for him. Oh my god, like this is like 0.5 wow. seconds and you're immediately back to the lobby. I mean, time to target. We looked at this just the other day, but looking at it from only his frags will really paint a picture of what this kid's capable of. Yeah, go. Yeah, it just tells you how impossible it is to play against them. But one more thing that you are going to notice in that clip is he's never alone. Right. He's never, you know, on his own. There's a lot of times utility following up as well. He's just so sharp. You know, the, the role of an entry fragger the kills are the bonus. Like, the main job is to create the space, right? To scale into the bomb side so that when you die, there's a trade, you get the side, you plant the bomb, you play the post plant. If you keep getting kills, that's why their T side in this event is absolutely insane. So, Donk has already played against FaZe. We have seen this happen. What happened? Well, he did them dirty in spite of a bad start, right? We talked about it. The beginning of Mirage was a little bit complicated, but Yanko, after that, he had his revenge. He had his way. He played the counter strike he wanted. I think the most important thing about Donk is, and what Spirit does tremendously well, is they put their players in a position to succeed, yes. right? Donk is allowed to thrive in this system. I mean, he's just going up top mid in the pistol round, just challenging, right? Like, there's no, hey, maybe we should play a little bit more safe. No, you just let him do what he's good at, and you play around him, and he's just finding so much impact time and time again. I agree with you, and it is the marriage of both worlds. On one hand, you have very evidently what is an actual prodigy of the game, and there is no discussing it. What he's capable of doing on his own is incredible, but it makes sense within the framework. It makes sense within the system. So many times we've highlighted setups that they had, pop flash made for him, the pathing as well. The pathing that he's got in some of these executes, of course he's executing the kills, but he's been put on that path, right? He's been optimized with utilities, with stuff. You talk about the people behind him, they also have to hold the candle, they have to be ready for trade, so it's not only his show, he's part of a machine that is very well oiled currently. Well, if this is considered a, a show of sorts, we're talking about different acts, and those acts might be looked at as maps within the series. Now, a little birdie, he goes by the name of Simple. He's hanging out backstage and he says, you know what, looking like Five maps, 80% chance of five maps today, which I don't know if that's sort of like a precipitation of rain chances, but if we compare them, what are we looking at? Well, if we have the, the map conversation, one of the interesting topics is what ban is going to be for phase, and I think this in itself is a little bit of a conversation. It, for my money, there are two possibilities out there if you face clan. You either remove Mirage, because it is 100% win rate for Spirit, and it's a map that they will pick whenever they can, or you call a bluff and you allow Vertigo to be going through. That's one of the questions that they have. When it comes to a Spirit, it's going to be pretty clear. I don't believe Inferno is going to be played. That would be completely crazy, and it's just going to be a matter of the maps and the order of them. But this Vertigo versus Mirage ban is the only question that I really have when when it comes to the veto line. Yeah, I feel we're not going to be seeing Vertigo. I don't think FaZe, I f they feel they're the better team, you know, on stage compared to Spirit. They're not going to take any risks here with leaving Vertigo. I feel they're ready for a rematch. For me, if FaZe are going to win this final, the two crucial maps are these, Anubis and Overpass, right? I don't think necessarily FaZe is going to pick, you know, Overpass early on. That might even end up being the fifth map, but Ancient, both teams really good on it. Mirage has to go to Spirit. If FaZe is able to take overpass in Anubis, they win this series. So we've already identified which ones that we're likely not going to see without a 95% chance. Uh, but then we do get that ordering. And that's what's going to be most important here, isn't it, Yanko? Yeah, and also, like, you know, we've seen teams make mistakes in a best of five veto, which doesn't happen too often. And speaking Nuke against G2 in yes. that Cologne Grand Final, right? We see. Faze just going back to Nuke, you know, feeling that that game in group stages wasn't really telling what they're doing. We get the same exact two maps. I'm a little bit surprised that Spirit doesn't pick T-side on Nuke. Well, honestly, the way they destroyed FaZe on the CD side was very one-sided. Not a whole lot of question. That is interesting. FaZe not leaving Overpass to be a fifth pick, going straight for it immediately when you know some of the role changes that they've had to go through here. That could be Kerrigan calling out Chopper, calling out his ability to lead on Overpass. It's not a map where we, I have seen personally Spirit play too, too much either. I think the only other option for FaZe was 
Anubis, right? And Spirit are no slouches on it. They had some difficulties on the CT side, but we pointed out the adjustments they were making to, to help with that. And yeah, I think absolutely overpass, FaZe has to win it. I feel the longer this series goes, the higher chance there is for FaZe winning the final. Even as the problem solvers, the critical thinkers we sort of identified, Having all of that in mind, having now all the information that we need, all the pieces of this puzzle, Maniac, you know what you got to do. I got to do it now. You got to, I think, I have a, yep, do it now. I have a special and specific prediction on that one. My prediction is that if Spirit win one of the two first maps, they win this series. Okay. I'm very specific and I know exactly what I'm telling you. I'm telling you that after the first map if you want. If they win one of the two first maps, they win this grand final. You wanna you wanna jump off for the Manko? No, I wanna go with phase. I'm going with experience on the biggest of stages and going for phase three one. Okay. Well, thank you very much, gentlemen, and thank you. If you're sitting here in the Spodic, if you're ready for the game, don't you damn worry about it. We're going to be going to a quick break so that we can come back. We can get this grand final under the way and find out who wins the Intel Extreme Masters 98th installment. We'll be right back after this. Magics, you lied to me yesterday. You said that uh, Donk had been nerfed. Didn't seem that way. They're fucked. <laughs> but you're not. FaZe just said you should 3-0 them, otherwise it will be a disappointment. You believe? No, we won't take a map. The mentality seems very weak. We are the weakness. Oh, God. Chopper, you ready for this? Yes. He said you're going to choke, no? So, can you repeat this? You won't choke? I don't know, maybe. <laughs> Zontix, cool, calm, still ready? Yeah. That's it, always. A few words, but let's see if we get that win.
The countdown is done. It's time to get it on. Katowice, are we ready? It's grand final day here on a Sunday. It's the Intel Extreme Masters 2024. Who's ready? This is what it's all about. We have got two teams backstage that want to be the champions, that want to come here, and they want to call themselves the victors in Katowice 2024. A best of five. Legends about to be written. My friends over here, are you ready? My friends over here, are you ready? Everyone in the middle, are you ready? Well then, it is time to bring out onto this stage one of the most sought after, one of the best trophies, not just in Counter-Strike, but in esports to be placed just here for a new name maybe to be written on it and bring it out that trophy. Please welcome the mayor of Katowice. It's Martin Krupa! Knowledge is passed on, refined and used by generations to come, to define what's possible. Fight or flight. The journey is vast. Fame, glory, a distant star, far from one's reach. Stay too long in the star's light and risk annihilation. Mission sequence starts. Six, five, four, three.
A grueling best of five showdown is on the way. Dreams are about to be shattered. Hopes about to be dashed. Heroes are going to rise. It's win or go home. Talking of heroes, here's Pasha Biceps to introduce the teams. Welcome, my friends. You've shown your power. Feels like falling down. Strength alone is not enough. Could we turn back around? Winning here mm -hmm. is no accident. Mm -hmm. I've known many of these champions. Many of them knew defeat, many times. Skies are red. You cannot outrun defeat. Should be careful now. But you can fight it and earn the respect of Spodek. Kerrigan has won a lot of championships, but I think Chopper can match. He has a chance now, and he will use it. At the very start of 2024, at IEM Katowice in the Spodek, a new potential trophy hoister steps forth. Uh, Brokey, once he comes to stages, I think he's a, he's a different breed, different animal. Shiro is well known for his clutch ability. Let's see if we can do that uh, on the big stages as well. Hard to say what they can really show up on the Grand Finals. I think they're a little bit unproven. They know that we have no experience on stage and they will think that they have advantage. But it's not about them, it's about us. If they're going to play their best individually and we are going to play our best, I think our game right now, our players is enough to win face in the Grand Final. Spore. Welcome your first grand finalist, Team Spirit! fast-paced calling, but we can as well play slow. I mean, people should be worried about the that even if we're on top, if you're winning in the game, it's never over. We have players that you can always rely on. They think for themselves. People know how to react. It doesn't really matter what start we have. Once we are all on, like, we're going to be unstoppable. Spore, welcome your second grand finalist, Face Clan. We got the crowd! We got the trophy! At this point, there's only winners! 
and losers. Let's have the captains. Carrigan, Chopper, this is your moment to shake hands. The fists are bomb. Let's get it on. A best of five. The champions of Katowice, Intel Extreme Masters 2024. But who's going to win it? Is it Team Spirit? Is it FaZe? Listen, we got one team with one of the greatest ever debuts on a big stage. We've got a team that wants to win it maybe another time. Who's going to win? Is it Spirit? Is it FaZe? Is it Spirit? Is it FaZe? Let's do this, baby! And away we go into a grand final. Five maps on the docket, and Spirit look to grab each and every one of them from FaZe. And what an incredible task ahead of them for Spirit. A marriage of balance of profiles here. The experience, Magix and Chopper in this jersey for more than four years, coupled with Zontings and Dong, the new generation, and a, a person in quest of redemption, Shiro, in the Team Spirit now. A lot to grab on for Team Spirit, but most importantly, can Donk keep feeding his foes the stuff he has been throughout the entirety of this tournament? so far, Yanko. The final boss awaits, Trace, in the grand final, in the best of five, it's FaZe Clan. With drops, Mr. Counter-Strike himself, Rain, who wasn't here two years ago, wanting to lift that trophy on the stage, Frozen, finding his form, finally delivering on that big stage. Brokey, the MVP from two years ago, doing tremendous work. But listen, Neo and Kerrigan have something like a hundred years of Counter-Strike experience between them. But Donk is unlike anything we've ever seen. Will they finally be the ones who come up with a way to stop this kid? All eyes on the prize here in Katowice, Poland. That is the Intel Extreme Masters coming to a head here all the way from start to finish. We're looking at five maps potentially. Nuke, Mirage, Overpass, Ancient, Anubis. Should we need them all? I guarantee you three maps a day, and I guarantee you one hell of a show. Without further ado, it is my honor, it is my absolute pleasure to bring in our our commentators so that we can get this party started. It's Sponge and Machine. You know how it goes. Every year, the best of Counter-Strike go on a pilgrimage to Katowice. The Intel Extreme Masters and Counter-Strike's ferocious fans flock to witness another chapter of Counter-Strike history. Spodek, are you ready for some history? A sold out Spodek. Championship Sunday. A grand final that could have grand implications for where Counter-Strike is going. It's the old versus the new. I wouldn't want to do it with anyone else, Chad. Spirit went affected by the gravitas of the stage yesterday. But today we'll find out if they are phased. Let's get this one on, Nuke. We pick up where we left off from the group stage, a rematch where Donk had rain in his pocket. 13 to three in head to head across those two maps. And that is gonna be a matchup we need to keep our eyes on. On one side of the stage standing veterans. The desk has explained it intricately. And on the other side stands an imminent threat to extending their legacy. This is the new gen here in the grand finals. And here in 2024, the Spodek has chosen its favorite. Spirit. They're against the crowd as well as FaZe Clan for this grand final. The odds are stacked against them. 
Well, the crowd may have chosen their favorite, but the Counter-Strike gods have theirs. Donk is redefining our understanding of the term prodigy. Let's see if he has it when it counts the most. Out the gates underway. Heaven smoke. Twist smoke. And Shiro has taken down Rain. That's early. Look at the nade damage. Preparation already paying dividends. Brokey recovers a level double headshot. Off of the flashbang. Carrigan needs one now. Gets nothing done. And Spirit off to the races. Seems way too easy there. Get that main smoke in play. Looks like a standard round for a phase. They allow Rain to work that yarn space. It's all a bit of a ruse in towards top. They pop but dismantled. And Shiro, that is a banger to kick things off. Donk even grabs a two-piece feed. And we've just started proceedings. So this is not the way FaZe were hoping. As we will see, Donk. <laughs> Classic at this point. Full focus. And no buy. We'll just be a deagle for Brokey. I'm sure we'll see that recycled towards this yard position. A humble team with the engine of a 17-year-old, but they're talking about it being a team game and nothing is more true in Counter-Strike. Let's see how far they can push this $700 investment from Brokey. He has to get past Donk. Fires off a shot. Donk does not allow that to go unpunished. He welcomes these engagements towards the yard position. Good way to give the young kid confidence, isn't it? Yeah. Just let him play a map outside against unarmored opponents. So he's already grabbed another two. This will pad his stats quite nicely. And well, they don't need any padding to be completely honest with everybody. Is there's a third. Not going to get the ace. Magic will throw a pair of his own. Another integral component. Chopper's right-hand man along this journey throughout Spirit is Magix. Loves kicking over a good chair and playing down the confidence in that pre-game interview with Banks. Yeah, I mean, there's some parallels to be drawn. Chopper, Magix, you've got Carrigan and Rain. Every good leader needs someone that's going to be there to avoid the undermining of his authority. And Chopper's definitely got that in buckets and spades. Let's see if FaZe can find some authority here. First gun rounds, weapons around towards Yard, Rain charging through. Slightly singed by the molly, but looking for pace and space. The CTs employing you to live their own to slow this crawl down. There's multiple bodies with the bomb at the back of the pack. Nade to clear, Frozen might get caught just across. Brokey needs to make it too. Yeah, that bomb on his back. Lavian across. And in this first gun round, Carrigan maintains lobby control. I know they can expect Rops to also be somewhere around the corner is Zontix. Heads up maneuver. He's going into this. Becomes a difficult angle to clear. If he can even get one, it's huge. It's massive from Zontix. Found by Rops. Still no rotation down towards B. They should be able to get it for free and plant this bomb. That's the call. Low sight taken. Chopper down the vents. It's a risk he's taking. And now the bomb is ticking. A lot hangs in the balance of this next exchange. Donk has a kit. Does he have a frag? Does he have anything to contribute here, or do they just have to back it up? Chopper on the decon loses his head. Force wide is Brokey. Burn down. Donk on a double. Found by Ray. It's still Shiro stopping. From behind his right. It's not planted for. What a retake this could be! A 10 second defuse, can he get there in time? He's gonna run nice out! Running him down! Saves! You don't get tighter than that, and we're just three rounds deep. Oh. A nail biter, and FaZe just, by the skin of their teeth, are able to pick that up. And immediately, we see Halley hit that tactical timeout button. Okay, a conversation. What a retake that was. They took their time. Dunk with another double. And yes, yeah, spelling some trouble. Have to give Zontic some credit here as well. But Rops just getting there to deny that defuse. And we know in MR12, these tiniest of details, it's going to be amplified. So a massive one on two for Rops in the early stages of map number one. Could be a bit of a tone setup. They can win back-to-back -back rounds phase. They can break spirit early. I do like the fact that Halley's taken that quite early just to level out the heads, make sure 
that they don't get into their own. Carrick has got his gems on his desk. Look how light the util is for FaZe. Sure, they've been able to get out the rifles. There's Galil's in lieu of the AK-47s. It looks like they want to go for the same opening. Get the old school smoke wall up to cross secret. Try and take this space as quick as you like. And oh my lord. He's done it again. Donk, an opening kill. This time to stop. FaZe Khan from getting across his ninth frag. Four rounds deep. Kid's omnipresent. Well, uh, yeah, the chance of resetting Team Spirit's just gone down the Gurgler. They were hoping to get all that space, and they're just challenging Yarn. Two through the smoke, one for Shiro. Uh, this one's been stumped. Yeah, that was what they took the time out for. Halley said, yeah, when they do the smoke wall again, Don, could you just kill two of them through the smoke without seeing? That'd be great. I mean, this kid, as you know, the name of the baby goat, but this kid, something special. He is the truth right now on the stage. Look at him go! Working his magic. Look at that infectious smile. The conversation can't be all about him, can it? Because during the group stage, I see Spirit just having their way with everybody. And I'm like, this isn't going to be the case, is it? Spirit aren't just going to win the event, and Dom's not just going to be the best player in the world, is he? It really? Is that how this is going to go down? How can you argue with this start? 11 to 1. <laughs> And uh, face back down to the fullest of Ecos. 17 years of age, now on the grand final stage. I didn't think we would have to start this so early, did you? No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if FaZe were expecting this either. They're trying to test Zontix. How does he fare? An 18-year-old. And he's done well. Delays them up the ramp. Glock shredded, Donk farming. <laughs> he's got 14 frags, lads. This is a unprecedented anti-eco or not. He's just farming up a KD of 14. He has a multi-kill in every round. I think that speaks for itself. Yeah, let that sink in. Well, there was a crazy stat that he had more multi-kill rounds than single kill rounds in the uh, play-in in the group stage. Yeah, so, uh, okay, well, this is uh, not the start that I'm sure FaZe were hoping for. And the only round they won was that 1v2. So they need to replicate something a little bit cleaner. Are you going to avoid Yard now? You just did a full smoke ball. No nades, no counterplay, just spammed. Different variation in the mix this time round. Shiro towards Red Pole. Donk in main. Oh, there's a pickup. Magic's picked off. Donk exploring his options. Rops has the bomb. He's the only one towards lobby currently. So at the moment, FaZe is still working on this yard space. A secondary smoke wall deployed. A nade to clear. So information. Beautiful. Whoa. Well, they've lost their advantage now. Contact. Timing. Oh, that is Rops with the bomb trap now, safe in the corner from the spread. Committing through. Chopper, if he wins this duel in combination from Dunk, they're locking it down on Nuke. Frozen. A double of his own design and 40 seconds to do the impossible. Right this ship for FaZe Clan. A clutch from Rops already, getting them there first. Bomb on that top side. They're not in their bedrooms anymore. Listen to that. Focusing on closing this one out, and Shiro will. Five on the CT side. It's a dream start for Spirit. That was another multi-kill from Donk. Keep, keep the tally, chat. Keep the tally. I think we're going to have to. This was great from Shiro, finding Rain on his excursion. Yeah, on that second wall. So they've erected it. Another smoke wall towards Yard to hope that the CTs had already rifled through their utility, not to be the case. Frozen gives it a decent crack as we see the first tactical timeout call from FaZe. Neo on the mic, the Polish representation. Maybe a big reason for FaZe being the fan favorites alongside of Carrigan. But at the moment, they are completely stumped. Four rounds to the good of Team Spirit, absolutely mauling them. It's a crushing start for FaZe on their map choice in this best of five. Mirage up next, overpass is the third. A map that FaZe are yet to play so far in Katowice.
And did you have expectations for how this final was going to go coming in, or were you were just going to wait and see? I'm a believer that FaZe are a different beast on the stage, and we saw that yesterday. Just look at Rain, look at Brokey from the day before in the quarterfinals. Those are individuals who really found their footing. Uh, but Team Spirit, this is... I, I can't even really put words on it. This is wild scenes. They are just having their way with FaZe right now. Nothing working for FaZe Clan. Early days. Yeah, expectations. Look, if they can get themselves up to four or five rounds on the T side of Nuke, What's they're still this? in the conversation. Zontix, he wants to do some heavy HG damage combined with a nice spray. Oh, the timing is immaculate. He'll only get the one. It's a big frag to pass. Here we go. Phase Clan and their pistols. A brutal and potent combination. And everyone gets one. Bar frozen. It's almost a team ace. It might have to be Brokey who steps up for the double. And Spirit were ready, but the round's going their way. Bomb ticking. And Chopper resigning himself to try and maintain. And finances aren't great on every member of Spirit right now, so Chopper will have to try and hold on to this A4. In fact, they broke through ramp there just as that HE came into play. A massive shot from Brokey to deal with Shiro, who leers out. Gets his head ripped off, and then there's so many gaps. Rain gets a kill towards Yard, Carrigan strolling out the squeaky door. There's so much chaos. So we've had a 1v2 situation. Rob's coming down to the tiniest of margins to secure that one. And now, a light investment off the back of a timeout into the second round win for FaZe. Wonder if Neo could take credit for that one. Take a look at how this buy is going to shape up. Magic's going to buy himself an auto shotgun again. And this is how it went down towards ramp. So they explode, Rops with a quick one, but this is the difference maker with the nade. Shiro trying to pick with it. Once Ramp's given up, very frustrating deaths there. Can get an all for Shiro, rifles for everybody else. Util's still in play, and FaZe Clan with another chance to get back into the buys. Donk with a different start. He is dropping straight down towards the lower side of things to poke his head up secret, but they want to test Ramp again. Seen enough. Multiple players leaping away as FaZe are evacuating lobby. Heavy numbers. Donk not even investigating towards Yard aggressively, so playing quite passive as Spirit. They've turtled up. Shiro won't be able to contribute here unless they clear the smoke. This is Slither Gap that's being held onto with the AWP. Walking close to the smokes to evade the heaven angle. Still across undetected. Remember, Donk's down here. And he has blocked with the smokes. So they know that somebody resides towards the lower side. Garrigan preparing Util for HUD. No one home. Magic's close with that aforementioned shotgun. He starts to look around. Donk immediately reacts. He got the info. Tucks in towards the clock position. Crossfire with Sontix. These two teenagers, only the one for one. Oh, the trigger discipline is stunning from Sontix. Does he get Carrigan as well? Not this time. Where's that bomb? With 14 seconds left, is this round too far gone? Seems it may be. Chopper, oh, he's missed his chance. He's missed his opportunity. Can they get this bomb down? Rob's has got to cover somehow. He's gotten the first. Exposed oh. his hands. Oh. Nails it only, Chopper. Phase resuscitate home. Holding on here. No way back in. The shadow, he knows where he is. It's a flash, it's a go, it's a hope, it's a prayer. Chopper does not have the health. They had the man advantage. Sensational double from Zontix, but all for naught. Let's phase make it three. What the hell happened to Shiro just there? Great question. Great question. Where was Shiro looking? He should have, Karagin should have been on his screen, he right? Been dead. He should have been completely in the open planning that bomb, or at least I thought. So Karagin gets the trade onto Zontix, which is a heroic double. Rops is in this first fight. Where, this. Where, where, what happened to Shiro? 
I don't think we're going to get the answers to our questions without his POV, but that is another soul-crushing round. We're just two rounds there the difference. Is. What? I think he was just so concerned about Rob's, expecting to have to go for the nose grab, the open plant. Did he expect it to be the Astralis plant? Perhaps. But Chopper knew that Carrigan knew was, where he was high invested. That's quizzical. And now they're the ones down to an eco. Yeah, that's almost paranormal. Well, uh, I do see a Zeus in the mix, Alex. Magix is going to try his hand. We haven't seen anybody be able to replicate the same successes as Rob's. Feels like we've almost had a full reset with the type of rounds the FaZe have been able to win. Number disadvantage situations, clutches, and pistols. Now they've uh, got Team Spirit right where they'd like them. Yeah, they weathered that opening storm. We just need to remind everybody, last time we had these two in-game leaders, these two teams locking horns in a playoff match on a stage was Antwerp, the Major 2022. And sure, it was only a two-map affair, but that's got to be one of the best stage matches you'll ever see. An action-packed back and forth. Blow for blow. Oh, it was kind of trying to get real excited, and the crowd likes that. Oh, there will be a chance for Magix. Shocking, he's missed. Oh. oh, he tracks that beautifully. Gets his team out of danger. 17 and 4. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Can he add anything else to the tally? Rain says no, and that is going to be a head to head that I'm going to be keeping tabs on. I mentioned in the last time they went toe to toe in the group stage. Donk had Rain in his pocket, 13 to 3 in head to head duels, and on this very map, I believe it was 6 to 2 in favor of Donk. Carrigan, very fortunate to be alive, and then he keeps dishing out pain. In game leader, having a nibble on some of the eeks. As Magix again without a rifle. Really rough scenes for him, operating with an MP9, having to put the utility ahead of the firepower. Door blown off, broke his AWP post, and Shiro has one as well. But FaZe can get the stranglehold off this first map and remind Spirit where they are. Oh, there it is again. Rain up and over. Dom goes down. Yanko was highlighting the proactive nature of Spirit on Anubis. Had some highlights to show, and now in a number disadvantage. On Nuke, you've got a few options. Turtle up in towards the sides, maybe take a gamble, or look for a fight. And Zomtix with the molly in his face. Can't really contribute to this yard hold. They've decided to gamble three. Chopper main, Shiro towards hell, and Zomtix Whoa. from that secret position. Just look at and admire how that utility isolates this setup. Oh, they've cleared it. They think it's clear. He's looking for his window of opportunity, his rain. Another smoke. It feels like they've got infinite utility here, FaZe. Everything well placed. Looking for Rantas' his chopper, and he's going to get a rude shock as he crosses back. Fired off a warning shot to Frozen. Mantles up and finds the head of Frozen. That's a big one from Chopper. He stands and delivers, loses his life eventually, and loses his sight. Surely the save call from Shiro and Zoltik. Has to be. Unless he wants to poke his head up that unbroken vent. Yeah, but you know Rain's built different. He'll handle that with class. Now gonna be 2,900 as the loss bonus into the next. So if these two save, they'll be able to drop silence down fours and then I'm sure Magix will operate on something lighter yet again. So Team Spirit, they hold on for the next 20 or so seconds. Should see themselves into another sizable buy, but will Halley take another tactical timeout? Last time he did, they got back into the winning ways. But then the same for Neo. Feels like we've had uh, one-way traffic ever since Neo took that timeout. Considering how this started, FaZe already with five under their T-round belt, they've got to be happy. Yeah, back when the scoreline was five to one, I was saying they get four or five on the T-side, they'll be happy with that. But right now they are sitting pretty and they even might be able to take the lead going into the halftime break. Spirit have difficult choices to make and they are going to start dropping across those M4s, so they want to contend, they want to be the ones to walk away with that lead. Magix this time with a 5-7. It's not a full investment. 
They've actually hedged their bets here. Everybody's spending around that 1500 mark, so there will be enough with the max loss bonus into the next for a full buy. This is still a deadly round for FaZe to deal with. Chopper eliminates the ability for the T's to slink down that vent. Rops is cheeky with it. He's they moving. Popped in. Right into the top side. Magix does well to find the one. But this is an uncomfortable position for Shiro to be in. Not the weapon for the job. Are they boosting him up? Chompers, he actually come back up the vent. And he's caught Brokey unawares. He will go down to Rops. This is still threatening spirit. This is miraculous. Somtix now comes up. Rops is not ready. Still adjusts. Finds the headshot necessary, but Donk is in the server. Makes it close. Frozen will close it out. And no cigar for Donk there. Oh, they kept it competitive, didn't they? Multiple bodies coming up that vent. Yeah, which you would imagine only goes badly, but they made that work, threatening at least. I mean, thankfully it was Rob's. He's always ready. And now they've got that six. Guns come out for Spirit, full buy. Kit on Magix, util for everybody. And Magix, well, he gets a rifle this time round. Let's see if that's the difference maker here for Team Spirit. The question's not about Donk and his frags. He's up to 19. It's the rest of the team, and they've highlighted it is a team game. The rest of the unit are going to need to contribute now. Battle of wits between Rops and Zontix on this ramp side. Rain again towards the yard. We know who typically plays it for the CTs. Donk on main side. Final call of phases T half. To leave with the lead, flashing close, looking for answers is Rain. They only got five rounds on this map in group stage, Alex. They've already done better than that. They've been doing their homework and too many bodies. Carrigan tries to tame the spray, one back from Robs. It's a double kill, looking for Zontix as well. A two versus two, but look, here comes Shiro, and it's only Robs. Magic's with that rifle, a single bullet could do it. There's an op for brute force, knowing his opponent has an advantage. Seven bullets in the magazine from Magix. If he gets flustered, it could get awkward. Full focus in this grand final, opening map. Rops has disappeared. Or has he? Yes, it's Magix! To keep it level, a 6-6 six, six scoreline on the half. Spirit have came to play, but it's FaZe. Be happy with that one.
swapping sides on the first map of this grand final. We are looking to crown an Intel Extreme Master champion here in Katowice today. Championship Sunday and a 6-6 scoreline on the half. Yeah, phase up to their usual bullshit, winning clutches, winning the live buys. They have pushed Spirit and they made them wince. This is FaZe on the big stage and the showman Carrigan putting on exactly that. Let's go the distance. I would love to. I would absolutely love to. See if they can get another pistol. It was rather comfortable. Ah, another ah. pistol, another Zeus. And this time round, not in the heart. Magic might think he's safe. Yeah, 100% success rate. In his purpose. Coming ramp, Alex. Yeah, but Brokey's down early. Romps will be reporting he's heard a lot. And he's done it again! Oh, shocking! A headshot into Shiro. Romps, he rides the ship. Now Carrigan does have to hold on to this. He's being tested in his test by Donk. A quick click of the Glock. For another double. These multi kills. So comfortable for him to find. In the meantime, Frozen. Four frags. Make it five. He's being quiet. Finds his voice in the pistol. Not contending with Donk. Does he go the same way as Brokey? Oh, makes a meal of that. Thinks twice. Takes the run away as they advance. They can get that bomb down. You two from Chopper as well to obscure the vision. Held by Chopper. Frozen controlling the dual Barantis. It's Donk in the clutch. Has he got anything more to contribute? Does need a fresh clip. Rain coming from heaven. And already a beautiful headshot. Looks it. monster on the Counter-Strike world. I'm terrified every time. Oh, Robs, you love to see it. Three from three and Frozen found some impact in this. Softened it up, made Donk susceptible in rain. He didn't shy away from that, did he? He's coming. Yeah, not letting Donk get a chance to readjust. Frustrated, he got three kills in that round and they got the bomb down. We know what that means, the Galil's come out. What's crazy is that frustration is because he knows he could have done that. <laughs> He's a 23 for nine. Yeah, let that sink in. Very threatening second round. Look how mad he is. He's whipped out the Kalashnikov round two. Yeah, tell me who's got the better buy. Or the better players. Let's find out. Well, this duel towards Yard. I was talking to Carrigan this morning. He said there's going to be Rain versus Donk to be the difference maker. And well, Donk's going to hold up more kills. But if Rain can contain Yard, the smoke will fade. Frozen gets the first. Zontic's down. Rain's still got a lot of, to work with here. Donk was trying to go wide. You saw him there. Trying to hunt down Rain. Look at that. An adjustment instantaneously. What is that reaction time? Yeah, bloodlust. Knew exactly where he was. Wanted to take the fight and delivers. And they've got this heaven space. And that provokes a reaction. They need to take some lobby control. So trading key pieces of the board, Rops, he's been a hero so far. He's typically hyper aware, but he's been caught off guard there. A bullet to the head of Dong, working with just 40. Carrigan's turn. Yeah, they're faltering. Proactive from Carrigan. Woof! Takes down Dong. It costs him his life. The no frozen was door. So is he still lingering? And then you have Brokey. With an auto shotgun, he needs to be in the right place at the right time, and currently that's not the case. 25 seconds as they route up heaven. They drop in towards the A site. Frozen's really going to be the only one who can contribute. They should be able to get the bomb down. And they will. Covered and eliminated. Brokey, he'll fall, and what's Frozen to do? He'll find the first. He needs this one cleanly, and he has found and he saves Spirit there. A shake of his head. He feels he had more there. Felt like he was ready for that fight, but Magic's maybe a little bit too quick to the draw. The MAC-10 in hand. Hasn't had the best of weapons throughout this game, Magic's, but he's getting it done. That's an impactful one, and Donk again. Just taking down Rain and Robs casually in a grand final. He's got 164 ADR. Yeah. And he's just forced FaZe onto a force of their own. They can break FaZe's finances and set themselves pretty in this second half. We've got a match of Counter-Strike on our hands. This is not a blowout. 
This is the grand final in the Spodek. And you're going to have to work if you want to lift that trophy. Carrigan knows that all too well. His fourth time on this stage in a grand final. Yeah, some bullets connect through the smoke. Donk made it look easy in the first half. Not so comfortable with the Deagle spam. Yeah. Chopper upon the fade, slips down. Who's going to rotate to deal with this? Rob's cut from ramp, but as we can see, postured forward. The vent slink is always on the agenda, but at the moment, if you were to head down, they've already been able to surge forward and take that control. So nobody from FaZe will get the early warning sign. The door will swing open, the site will be flooded, and to get back into a retake, I think you might just save. Look for exits, see if you can get a kill or two, and that's possible. They get the jump onto Zontix. But again, to go for this, you don't have a kid, you've given up the site, and they are just going to hold on to their goodies. So in this type of a situation, if you're Carrigan, you're calling their bluff. You're saying, look, if they go lower, if they plan that bomb, we'll give it to them. We'll allow them to have it. We have to force by right now. We can't in the next. Let's hold on to what we have and have a double dip as we take an eco in the next. So you won't see too many extra investments behind what they're saving right now. A MAC-10 scavenge, the MP9, Trying to cut off some of the exit points for Team Spirit. They can do more damage, snatch away a rifle. That would also be something that they could be happy with. But Spirit with the safe passage over towards ramp and eight rounds now on the board. So outmaneuvered. Second tactical timeout. Not sure how big the conversation can be about what they have at the moment. Uh, again, you would hope for a gamble late. You have the Deagles on Rain and Brokey to see if you could remove a couple of heads. If the space can slowly be stacked upon, then sure, these pocket rockets can do a lot of damage. But again, if they just get the smoke wall up or find the path of least resistance, they have all the advantages in the world. Yeah. And FaZe have already found one with the sidearms in that first half. The catalyst to their comeback. Yeah, they've invested in a couple of extra smokes. So aiming to block here. And maybe there has been a discussion from FaZe. Where are you going to try and funnel team spirit? Smoke all quick, but it's a full fake. There's nobody outside to be behind that smoke wall at all. You can see them already darting back towards Lobby. They can keep smoke, uh, squeaky door smoked a couple of times here. That's going to be possible. If they time this perfectly with the top hut molly and Team Spirit commit, it might be enough to segregate them. We've got about a minute on the clock. There's the hut molly and the smoke has bloomed. They're gonna come through. They are. And it's good find from Carrigan. Finds Donk. It's a big scalp to take and need another one from Brokey. Just a deagle to his name. Rotation through, Rops in support from heaven. Magics, Bates, taken down. Brokey's deagle alone and gone. Some casualties for Spirit, but well handled. It's Shiro finding two important frags. And a decent attempt from FaZe. They got what they wanted, right? They came out the door, they were able to segregate that fight, make it awkward through the gray screen. FaZe maybe going to be slightly frustrated, and you could see as the support was coming to aid Brokey on the side, they just got removed, obliterated. Rops and Rain hit the deck. Simultaneously, stereo frags as, well, Spirit just one more round away from the double digits. FaZe Clan into the buy. Don't have a defuse kit. And after winning the pistol and losing the force, they are now in hot water. This is their map choice. Mirage up next. Under scrutiny. He still takes down Magix. Trying to get down the vent. He's actually just hunting, jumping through the smoke onto Zontix. Two frags from the in game leader, and he's not done there. He charges towards the two on the site. 
Dong's still there, trying to handle the rotator. Miss Nade, it's actually Shiro catching Brokey's aggression. Nade onto Dong, so this is chaotic, but it still can go wrong. Chopper in a clutch, fakes it out, investigated now by Rops, and down he goes, FaZe! A compulsory round converted. Carrigan missed the chaos, thriving in it there. Massive compulsory kills towards that top side. He caused some big issues. His teammates were still completely smoked off, isolated on the side. So the in-game leader with a massive, impactful set of frags there. Yeah, and I mean, he, it's not like he's unaware of the rules, the expectations, and he likes to subvert them. We, uh, we heard in his interview talking about trying to beat players like Nico. They're expecting one thing, you break that rule. And needs to break him, and I thought Zontic's trying to make his way down the vent there, but caught in the source, Carrigan the difference maker. And then his boys. They come in and they mop up the mess. Let him here. The showman brings us one round close up. Spirit took a tactical. It's going to be the third and final. Magic with a Mac 10, a pretty decent spawn. Whoever loses this one, finances will be in the bid. It's about taking saved weapons into consideration. Rain's got to find this opening exchange. He's been kept humble so far. Just pressure alone. Enough to hold him at bay for now. It's team Spirit, smoke and mirrors. Sontic's maneuvering, he's been punished for this forward position before upon the fade. Carrigan investigates, he's got Frozen in support. They have nothing left to block with, Alex. Yeah, other than the bullets and the AKs they've scavenged. They just walk out to all. Spirit can aim map. Unless it's Carrigan that brings the fight to them. Chopper down the ladder and opens up the site. Rob's only the one, Spirit, kick open the front door. Has to be a save. Rain and Brokey need to hold on to these rifles. They cannot give them over. 1,900 losses to the next, and in-game leaders in back-to-back -back rounds having huge impact. And both times towards that top side, just caught coming down the ladder, obliterates Carrigan. Yeah, I want to see that from Chopper's POV, because that's just instinct kicking in. FaZe are going to have to do this the hard way if they want to try and take us the distance here on map number one. Their pick in a best of five. And the fact that they're happy to go into it again, knowing they lost it. Here he comes. Oh, hello. Oh. Yeah, first bullet. And ready for the second. Chopper makes it look easy. Rops at that point, what is he meant to do? The floodgates are open. Hut and Squeaky both left wide open. And with the molly on Hut, their flight paths, it's all in one level. No Z axis required. Rain could drop an M4. Or they could just take a save and... Oh, they are. They're buying. Okay. Well, this is the shove from FaZe. Something quite poetic about the psychological coach for Team Spirit having noise-canceling headphones on. He's not here about the noise. Can't even hear it. He definitely makes some, though. Oh, yeah. Well, Neo... Last time we saw them take the timeout in that first half when the chips were down, the pistols came out, and so did a round. They dropped one M4. There's two MP9s for Carrigan and Robs. Util, a little bit skimp. Diffuse kit for Brokey. Have enough to work with to be competitive, but this almost feels like the map. Face lose this, 2400 loss into the next. We'll have to take the Eco Spirit up to 12. The guns come out, Phase need four on the trot just to take us to overtime. Chips shoved into the center of the table. What have you got for us, FaZe? A ramp boost to try and get the most out of these SMGs. So, Rob's elevated by Rain towards Yard, just Brokey passively. I'm going to try and contest the smoke wall lobbed out again. Will Dong scale behind it? We've seen it just be all for pressure's sake, all to force that rotation. And Rain has darted down towards the lower deck to deal with the secret leak. I might want to wrap through and try and split A. This movement, hunting, killing, Donk! Up and in! Just like that, FaZe Clan. 
Send back to square one, send back to spawn. Team Spirit posting 11 on their opponent's map pick to start this best of five, to set the tone. With 27 frags under his belt, another multi-kill round out of Donk. Yeah, and what I was just discussing is now the status quo of the finances for FaZe. There's nothing they can do about it. Again, just trying to hope to save. They are looking quite helpless at this juncture. And to remind everybody again, for the second time, they won the pistol in this second half. But were able to hold on, and they might lose these rifles as Uncle Chop Chop. Looking to take an ear or two. Rain is gone. Shiro two. You'd love to hold on to this one, quite the upgrade, just as the final few seconds of this round transpire. Props will leave with an AK. That's the only thing that they have to cling on to and celebrate. And as you'd highlighted, Chad, a 12th imminent. At least that's what we would expect. Uh, unless Robs can have a miracle round, but you can see how easy this top split looks. The fact that they find the first, Magic's onto Frozen, waltzing in through main, and right now, Getting made to look a little bit silly, our face. Team Spirit have kept up this form. And it has to be remembered that each member of FaZe Clan has more Grand Finals experience individually than Spirit have combined. They missed the flash for the ramp push. That was going to set Robs up for a kill. He's still going to go dry. Okay. Important. They missed the flash and he still goes for the peak. He had to do that. 18 kills for Robs. He's delivering so far. Needs Brokey and Rain to join him, and we're talking about those two being big game players. Well, at the moment, they're not able to find their groove. Carrigan gave it a pot shot. Spam, unloading their magazines into the smoke, but he's gone. Made of the smoke, Robs has a chance! What a shot from Robs! And Doc has next victim! One rifle! Up against five, and it's Robs that leads phase towards the ninth. Disrupting the flow of this game. They're going for the plant chat. Two versus five. And Robs. Oh, Robs! He's not done! This could have been five! He's caught by Chopper, but he's done four. The work is done. A single frag required from FaZe to finish what Robs has started. Rain edges closer. Confirms his presence. The bomb ticking short. Four on his screen. And it's Pokey to secure it. Those are those big game moments from Superstar. And it's Rob shining bright tonight. That is what you love to see. Again, the missed flash still goes for the swing, goes out towards oh. Yard on the clear, grabs the first, tap, tap, tap it in and takes down Donk, doesn't even have to see him. The only way that could have been better is if he denied the plant from Magix, but beautiful stuff from Rob's, and that is going to fill FaZe with some life. One saved AK. That's going to come back to haunt Team Spirit if they can't correct those wrongs. Unbelievable. Already this grand final, Robs has had two of those. Pulling FaZe into a competitive scoreline. Trying to go toe for toe with Donk right now. He's 27 kills. Brokey aggressive, Whoa. trying to find his form. Give it a go. Hyper aggressive, and Donk will laugh at him. Frozen opportunities on ticks though, has already passed through. This is some hyper-aggressive move. Carrigan asleep at the wheel! How's he done that? He had six frags coming into this one, and he's just gone for a solo hero play. And the two teenagers with a double each. As a response to FaZe's find. And Rob's his handiwork, now he stands alone with nothing to do. FaZe have to dig so deep for their rounds, and then Team Spirit's come so easily. Finding the gaps, hitting all the shots. And now they just need to find Rob's. God, that timing. A frustrating one for Frozen. Rob's will go down after one. There's that 12th, the elusive 12th is quite quickly remedied. I suppose, fortunately for FaZe, the round they won was with a saved AK, so they can invest yet again, but... We're back to where we thought we'd find ourselves, and Brokey trying to be aggressive. We know that he loves to be chaotic, but Donk has his number. That's the fifth opening duel going in the favor of Donk right there, and yeah, Carrigan can't quite believe it. So this top site, it's like a leaky boat right now. Rob's condemned to an MP9, rifles for three, a deagle for Frozen. Is it really going to be just an aggressive top? They take it whenever they want, he just walks on in. This time, it's FaZe that repel the invaders. Oh dear, Donk, Donk, with three. Sweeps FaZe under the rug, Rain is next challenge. Can't get past the spray, Shiro can. The double.
dust will settle. The round has only just begun and we are into a one versus two. Miraculous triple there and oh, far enough a warning shot does Rob so loses his element of surprise. Initiates the plant and running at them with an MP9. There we have it. Spirit have come to play. Phases map pick. Jumper wants to hear. He's happy with that, and so is Donk. First grand final in this level of Counter Strike, and he has just absolutely crushed Phase. Don't know how it's come to this I don't know how I could resist I took a vow to never sin But I saw the darkness from And you know what? Man, really kind of speechless at this moment. Donk has came through here and did the damn thing on FaZe, making him look silly in some regards. In the frags department, hell, even in the control department of the entire game so far, control and tempo is Donk at this point. I think that goes very easily said. Gentlemen, welcome back to the Intel Extreme Masters. I know there's a bunch of you watching from all around the globe, a whole bunch of eyeballs on what is exactly transpiring here in Katowice. And for the time being, it is still the Donk Show. It is still the Donk Show. I'm not a native English speaker, but I feel like everyone's running out of adjectives to describe this That's kid right. at yeah. this point. You have to realize we've never seen anything like this in the history of this game, which has been around for more than 20 years at this point. It's been around a long time. And it's not going anywhere, too, in case you thought that was like sort of the send-off. No, 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 no. Let's check out our one expect clutches of the event so far. And now it is just Shiro throwing into the clutch. Oh, oh. This fight is CT and it's wonderful to fall down. Now oh, just has to bait oh. oh. He's actually a problem for Na'Vi as he gets spammed right through it. Wonderful, he's a clutch and he might be good for it. Five for the man! Oh, oh man. Oh. He's giving himself a chance. No way. Make a, moment. Make a moment of he it. Here's it. Elimination game, looking for a 1v3 clutch. Giving him the chance to take that duel. 1 HP. Boros! Trying to swing wide. That's the author known. He knows everybody's position. He's got a chance. He's got duels to isolate. Holzer, go! Sampaius nails that shot. Goes back again. But this time, brought down by Boris.
Yeah, there they are. The one expect clutches so far. And I mean, at this point, we're surefire to get some more as we uh, progress through this grand final. Isn't that right, guys? Absolutely. But I want to keep the conversation on Dong. Absolutely. If you allow me. I think this is what, what we, else is there to we have to start. About? We have to maintain. We have to finish probably on that topic. Listen, if you are looking at Spirit playing in this game, you have a feeling this is a grand final. We're talking about jitters. You're talking about a couple of individuals maybe missing a few shots at some points. There are critical moments where phase get away. Dong has zero pressure. In fact, he plays probably even better. The amount of time where you can touch a point of tension for Spirit throughout this game and don't get them out of here is incredible. How the hell is a 17-year-old with these shoulders already carrying the weight of an entire team with veteran next to him, and he is the one leading the way for them? Which is why he's our US Air Force Aim High player of the map so far. You know, Alex said this earlier. He put these words into my mind, and this pretty much sums this up. We're talking about positional provocation. He seems absolutely unfazed by the moment. 12 multi-kills, 130 ADR. He got off to a blistering start, yes. right? Yes, there were a couple of anti-eco kills, but we love those. Boost the confidence a little bit more. I think it's impressive. He just plays the same every single game. Doesn't matter what's going on. We'll get this round a little bit later, which was one of the big ones in the first half, but it's so demoralizing to play against because he just keeps keeps coming and he just keeps swinging, yeah. swinging and winning all these fights time and time again. And there is no selfishness to his game. Whenever he has to swing, doesn't matter if the situation isn't in his favor or not, he will swing. And sure, at some point he's going to get punished a couple times, but more often than not, he doesn't. And look at this, look at some of the highest rated players we've had in Katowice, at every Katowice. If you want to go back to anything even close to Dong, you have to talk about Nico, and that was in the Mouse jersey, and that was off of wow. five maps. Five maps. Dong is on 10 right now. He could finish on 14 in this grand final and his numbers are going to put all of these guys to bed in the bin i i have no word i'm getting paid to talk i'm running out of words <laughs> the hell is going on yeah it's a little unhinged it's uncontrollable at this point but you know and there, you, there's some of those frags that we just saw that didn't really make any sense we're talking about frags to the smoke and hell round four might even be a decent example of what that is yeah listen at this point it's not much about the strategy of it it's the message that it sends that i wanted to talk about in round four it's the beginning of the game phase just on round three, of course. It is an entry kill through the smoke for Dong. A little bit of success, of course. He's going to add another one at this point. Check him PC. That's not real. And it's just <laughs> the, the effect and the impact that he's got, of course. And once you're in that 5v2, he, of course, he's going to swing more. And this is the best way to start the grand final. You have just lost one round. You've been reset. And then you immediately strike back with a 4k from him. This is about getting your team in the right mindset, being aggressive in that 5v2 at the very end. Ooh, when we saw it, I think everybody knew. It was also the nightmare scenario for FaZe, right? Just as you claw your way into a round, which was a tremendous 1v2 from Robs, you know, the reset round comes in before you even have a chance, before the round even develops, you're two man down. Mm. And that was the problem for FaZe in this whole map in the second half too, is they couldn't string rounds together. Well, let's do it. Yes. Let's use our cool piece of hardware, Yanko. Yeah, this is I, the think, moment. I think we go, we go to the second half. Another reset round, a bit of a slower default from Team Spirit, right? They're now going to start throwing those smokes outside. And what that's going to do really is going to draw the attention from the face players, right? You see number six, that's carrying. He has to spam. Zero is brokey. He's spamming. Green. All the attention is towards Yard because they don't have information. They throw an incendiary too, but you can see that Spirit is grouping towards Lobby. And it is this lack of information that makes the round difficult for FaZe. You can see now Brokey, he's actually going to go all the way down to B through lower, basically through ramp. They need to account for secret. and. It's still getting difficult. Rain is in this isolated position. He's just watching for main. Basically, someone tries to go heaven, and FaZe feels so pressured that they're going to go for that lobby crunch. But that's exactly what Spirit is. They're going for an A hit. Chopper get, gets down in just the right time. Two big entries, and the round is over for FaZe Clan. They have to eco one more time. I feel like both teams made the same mistake in their defense, which is to give space to the opponents outside. We talked about the incredible beginning of Donk as well, but Rain had a couple of moments where he bested him in 1v1s and then FaZe could suddenly, you know, go ahead and take some map control here. That's the same thing where FaZe is allowing outside space to be taken or at least the fog of war to remain. The reason why I also wanted to bring this clip up is that Chopper is the one that has the actual round defining moment. The double kill that he gets on that HUD push as well is absolutely uh, instrumental and he was someone that I would put under the microscope because there is a moment in this game, we're not going to touch on it, but I'm going to go back to it in the first half where 
Spirit is about to reset phase. It's a three versus two. They have the right read, the right position, and Shopper fumbles it. He fumbles the bomb in the hand. That's the moment where phase come back. It's the only time we see Spirit getting a little bit jittery, a little bit of nerves, a bit of frustration, and it's so great for the captain to be able to have a moment like this where you redeem yourself live throughout the map. Mentally speaking, a huge boost for him. And it has to feel good for Spirit fans and players across the whole thing here. I mean, uh, obviously, you're trying to get into this grand final. You're already stacked up against a team like FaZe. It's not going to be an easy ball game, no matter what you say. But in that ball game, we did see the first L get taken in the series. So Neo caught up with us in between maps. All right, uh, talking to Neo for a second. Um, as everyone passes behind me, and the first thing uh, he said was, yeah, we got dunked. Um, you know, uh, I guess the prophecy came true. He said it cost us a lot when we couldn't convert and we lost the momentum and we really never got it back uh, after that beginning or after that in that second half. Um, but yeah, got donked. And, you know, is that going to keep happening? That is a million dollar question, especially if you're going on to Mirage next. Yes, Mirage, a spirit pick, a phase CT start, and, uh, well, for phase, how do they build back in this series after dropping map one? I think you have to take advantage of your opportunities, right? They had chances to really take control. They want the second pistol round, too, right? You have to find a way to convert. That's, that's been the problem for a lot of these teams, you know? There were a couple mm. of other teams who had a couple of opportunities in games against Spirit, but every time you give them an inch, they'll take a mile, so... Face has to tighten up a little bit more. And I think the aggression, if we talk about the CD side of Mirage, I think the aggression on the extremities of the map are going to be very needed for FaZe. At this point, whether or not they will admit to it or acknowledge it, the donk psychological effect is in full force. It is happening. I know they have experience. I know they're a veteran, but everybody else is feeling it. Maybe before this first map, you could have hidden behind the, oh, you know, it's the grand final. Maybe he's not going to show up. Well, sorry. I'm so sorry, but he showed up. He's here. He's ready to play. So they have to find ways to find opening kills, not against him. That's not going to happen. Something's on the side. Magic's on the B stairs. You can go there trying to find these kids. Grab map control for your team. And FaZe has tried on you, but it didn't work out towards the very end of the game. Brokey with aggression on Yard. Gets shot down by Donk. Then Zontix makes a play out of the smoke. Kone gets two kills. And that's it. The round is done and dusted. The game is still close at that point. That was after the Rops round. They have a chance to get back into it. FaZe was trying to make plays, but they just couldn't execute. Guys, I, you know, this is not, I think, where we particularly put this series when we showed up today. But guess what? We still have a bunch more maps to go. The first one going the way of Spirit. Perhaps FaZe can buckle back into this series and, and grab map two. Perhaps we can get this in a more competitive nature than just donk running around. I think is that is going to be like the, the main part of this show. Is that what we're looking at? That is going to continue to be, I like, guess. My God, like what? <laughs> Why would we expect anything else in this point? He has 32 kills. 32 kills in the first map of the grand final. He's averaging over 110 ADR in the tournament. This is the Donk Show, and we're just here to witness it. And there is more to it than Donk. The rest of the team can deliver more than what happened on map one. So I think for the FaZe fans out there, it's going to get real dry. Yeah, it's going to get real interesting before it does not Gentlemen, thank you very much. We do need to go to that break. We can come back with Mirage on the other side of it. You are tuned into the the Intel Extreme Masters, the grand final of Katowice. Holy smokes. We'll be right back.
to my face Tell me now why you want to wait Running, running out of words you want to say It's time for the DHL Drop. Whether you are in the arena or watching from home, you can participate in the DHL Drop. Follow the steps for a chance to win amazing prizes. Hold up the DHL Drop sign or type exclamation point DHL Drop on the chat to enter. Discombobulated. More questions than answers after that first map as Team Spirit donk a debut grand final performance unheard of over decades of Counter Strike. This man is doing something that no one has done before, but FaZe Clan, they have the opportunity to respond on map two of this grand final. Katowice, are you ready? Come one, come all, welcome to the Donk Show. 12 on the trot for Spirit on this very map. FaZe must break that streak on their home turf if they want to level the series. A B pop at the ready and out of position right now are FaZe. The sight will be foregone. Smokes, flashes, fly through the sky and frozen. Can't connect the dots. Oh, he's given it a good go, but he's lost one already. Brokey cut down out of the round. Magic's to punch in the code. The round shortened. Rob still can't seem to find the head of Zontix. He's miraculously still standing. And phase find one. Dock down on bench. Is there a retake on the cards? Kill on Carrigan. Headshot from Rain. Back from Chopper. They have Kitchen, but Rain. He's got the headshot. Chopper. The last to fall. And phase turn. All right. It's all about the conversion now. Yanka was talking all about it. They have these opportunities. That's one. 
And this is the thing, you're the more experienced unit. You should be making the most of this. But remember, that bomb goes down. Important for Rain to have a couple of tidy kills there. And his counterpart, Brokey, went down in the early stages. It's time for the two of them to live up to that big game. Monica as Doc shot. Flabbergasted. And Frozen, it's time for him to earn his stripes in that phase jersey. <laughs> This second round says one thing. It says we back our aim over yours. Who needs nades when you can have headshots? Yeah, well, FaZe, no, it's likely coming. You can see how heavily they've invested into rifles as well. It's just Brokey operating on the new tube. It's swinging out mid. Chopper, I think, uh, window smoke. Let me investigate. Donk, clearing, Brokey, unable to convert the second pump of the alligator. Audible dismount. Smoke played ahead of it as Donk, he's been punished! As Rain stands his ground on the A site. Oh, one from Rain! You don't want him to wake up in this grand final if you're a Spirit fan. No, just ask Mouse. Yeah, legacy performance from Rain to get them here. Oh, Magix and Zontix, maybe just hoping to find a bit of damage. There's still have 50 seconds left on the clock, is there? Opportunities are now being restricted by Frozen. Didn't have the best of showings defending that upper bomb site. Highlighted by the desk just how that fog of war was an issue. Frozen timing just against him here as the two have been able to pair up. And has pivoted into more of a passive position. 30 seconds now. Bomb to be scooped. Zero more for Rain. He has Robs for the crossfire. Swings out. Perfect timing. Robs will spray them down. A triple total. That's the conversion. And an easy one now. So making the most of their hard work is FaZe. Putting team spirit. It's the most difficult of situations going forward. <laughs> Dedication. But yeah, second one from Rain. That was the twist of the knife. That was the end of the round. You can see Rob's just cleaning house for the close. And wow. Oh, okay. This is when you get tested, when it's not all going your way. How do you respond? Well, we thought there would be no issue, especially after map number one. Now he cops a nade. And a volley. And a bullet. It's Carrigan to best him. Now, Carrigan taking down Donk is particularly impressive. Almost double Donk's age. They're still coming your way, Carrigan. Yeah, he's happy. He'll collect, supported now by Frozen. HG hey, at the doorstep. They have the incendiary. Carrigan goes looking for trouble. It's a deagle, no bullets, but all fine. Juggled back to the healthy Brokey. Come on, ah, Brokey. He got greedy. He did indeed, Zontix. No slouch either. How much more damage can they inflict? You have to get past Frozen. Just turret. Tapping away to secure this 3-0. There it is. Frozen's on line two. Should have been an easy one. He'll take those. Needed to help build the confidence. Precisely. But uh, these first two maps, Nuka Mirage, they were the same maps they played in the group stage for that seeding game where Spirit were able to pick it up 2-0. Mirage fell in the favor of Spirit, 13 to 10. So FaZe came close. Making a dent in towards those double digits. Might be feeling confident moving into this as the second map of the series. They have to uh, really come online with some of their more classic plays. Rops, clutches, lighter investments, pulling rounds out of their ass. And you talked about that Mirage win streak out of Spirit. Well, you know, FaZe are all, all too familiar with what that means. They've had plenty of maps, they've had dominant periods on, but puts you under the microscope. It makes teams look a little closer as to what's working and why. Yeah, it'll be interesting to follow along in the cams to see if we see more donk frustrations as uh, headsets are off, so we will have to mind our P's and Q's. These are the scenarios where FaZe have a lot more experience, just sitting, chilling, taking a deep breath. For Spirit, on the other hand, who have apparently been so nonchalant about the whole situation. Ah, crowd stage, don't worry about it, it's no big deal. You have to make sure that you uh, keep your focus. 
Reigns having some mouse issues by the looks of things. That's not what you want to see. Very clear who the fan favorite is in the Spodek. Or the Spodonk, I think it's been renamed to. <laughs> yeah, if he keeps that up, I wouldn't be surprised. Good energy in this in here this year, Katowice. Yeah, you guys are fantastic. I can't see an empty seat right now for this grand final. Everyone gathered to bear witness. The new champion. Phase 2022 champions. Yeah, Rain, while he's got that headset off, I'm sure he's thinking about redemption. The chance where he could actually lift that trophy. Didn't get the opportunity in 2022. Carry a guard, carry a goat. He's definitely a fan favorite, and I think he's a big reason for it. And some omissions in this playoff. But not Spirit and not FaZe Clan. Yeah, big names like Vitality, Astralis. Not even making it close. Well, that's impressive. Some craftsmanship in the crowd. No beer snakes in the spot deck. That's true, it hasn't, hasn't spread. Could run and gun, I think is what they were discussing <laughs> there. When you saw it, I'm still thinking about that ramp exchange where the smoke was thrown out by rain, Donk, donk, brain. He's like, okay, well, he's not. What is he not expecting? Me to try and push before the plume. Rain does, and that's just the first time that doesn't work for Donk. You could see immediately his frustration started to bubble to the surface. And if these kind of players, if Phase Clan can get a, a read as to his preferences, maybe, maybe they can control him. Wow, art as well. Everyone, arts and crafts throughout the arena. Even got the sun in the spodek. One way to get the vitamin D and still make all five maps of this our best of five. Man, imagine we get five maps. Yeah, this could be juicy, especially if we get more of the counter like we had on map number one. Clutches, multi-kills, donk sanity. Just a reminder if you've tuned in and wondering what's going on, we're just waiting on a technical issue. I think some hardware is malfunctioning. Headset's back on, that's always a good sign. Well, he's given the nod. Definitely a new mouse, it was just a white one, now it's black, so uh, changing peripherals and... Mid grand final. And just with the start of this one, where Rain found some impact to silence them on the force, but we'll have to see if that plagues him now. Someone isn't going to get flustered by a change of mouse. I would say that Rain might be that name. Yeah, but there's a lot of players that that would really get under your skin, get into your head. And ladies and gentlemen, we're back in business. Let's get this going. Map two, first gun round. What's the tone from Chopper? Top cat smoke, only towards Con, feigning some of this mid pressure. Speaking of pressure, they want to send it over towards B. Frozen actually let off the leash. Vying for control of apps in Sontix and Donk. This young duo, double swing, immediate deletion. And he's got his knife out. He wanted to try and punish, take the gap. It's delayed by the incendiary. Brokey and Carrigan immediately get their feckles up in preparation for pace. That's so much pressure they applied and forced out Util as well as the rotation. So job done, Donk knows it. Carrigan searching elsewhere, finds Chopper, not ready for that. 
What an equalizer. They headed to B, oh. yes they do. Yeah, Brokey's missed his first opportunity, won't get more of those. Again. He's still hitting shots. Brought down by Shiro. Brokey, Brokey aware he got him low. On to Zontix. Look at Magix. And he's holding for this angle. What a shot from Zontix. Magix coming in from behind. Rain unawares. Bullet to the back of his head. Puts it all onto Robs. Freedom to plant. His first gun round. Statement of intent from Spirit. Despite Carrigan's heroics. I don't know about going for this. Look at the finances. If he saves this, they could drop. They can have a much better looking buy round. Robs is going fishing right now. And you say Carrigan's heroics. Brokey has to hit one of those. Slow start for him on map number two, zero and four. The problems with Rain's mouse, if that does slow him down as well, the Norwegian necessary is they're pushing into Rops right now. How many can he take with him? There's the first, all removed on the second. And Rops can't take them all with him. Shiro will pick up the AWP. That is a nice little collection for the sniper to take forward in this matchup. A sea of blue. Dreams and nightmares. And the self-professed inevitability that is Donk and his squad team spirit finding their round. And here he is, you can see this one from his POV, just too comfortable. And the B-side lost on that first gun round. A decent damage being done by Robs to keep the economy of spirit right where FaZe wants it. They had enough in the residuals to be able to get a full buy out of their own. Brokey will be afforded an AWP yet again. So both teams with their snipers equipped. Only two incendiaries, a handful of smokes for FaZe to try and find their openings. And love for the polls, good to see Ents on the stage. A call for the first time since 2016. Couldn't go further than the quarters. Top cat smoke again. Ram progression. You can see a difference in setup. Brokey's not fighting mid through window or con. He's playing it from A for a fast cat scale. And if they search a ramp, the bombs are on its own. On the back of Donk. Chopper makes the first move. Fires off some warning shots. His presence noted. And nothing coming back the other way. So it tells you they are playing off middle of tilt. Frozen limps out one of his own. So Smoke to connect to stall the mid-aggress. Something for Brokey to work around. A lick of damage. Who draws first? Blood, it's Donk! Chopper cut down, Brokey on the reposition, Frozen activates as well. An opportunity obscured by the smoke is Shiro anticipating this re-aggress. Frozen, oh, spots him, it's up against the AWP. Who wins this duel? Magic's pressuring as well, it's Shiro, good for it! And look at this, the bombs drop back, Donk's taking space towards B, this fight in middle has drawn so much attention, Carrigan's given up the side, the short player Frozen's dead. He's gonna try and rotate in time, 20 seconds. It's all on Carrigan. Just about made it through the window of opportunity. Many oh no, Carrigan can't get it done. And Magix is here to catch the rotations. Okay, Magix down through the boards, he'll finish it off. And Spirit back to their winning ways with some consecutive. Oh, that was dangerous. Don gets that opening pick over towards Aram onto Robs. Broke, he did find some impact. Two kills from him on the AWP, so we've been asking for it from the Latvian. Uh, not enough, and they didn't commit to the site. Phase. they bit as Donk. Procedural on the clears. This was an awkward duel. Frozen so committed, no support available. Thought it was definitely going to be that A play. But as they reroute, being duped again. Ah, oh, Phase Clan, and they're the ones who have to stomach a bit of an eco. Ah, Brokey did uh, some hard work there. They needed more from the other members of FaZe. Another opener for Doc. <laughs> He's going through his routine. It's clobber in time. Just a sea of flame. I turn that. No safe haven for rain. Donk farming him up. 
one by one they fall. The site is theirs. You know, it had problems with it if it was only doing it against the Ecos, but the fact he's doing it against, well, no matter what they're equipped with, he can hate them all. Yeah, there are no words that seem to adequately and appropriately express just how absurd the arrival of Donk is to the world of Counter-Strike. Frozen and Rops not putting their names on the altar. Gonna hold on to what they've invested, which is very, very little. Lost bonus into the next to 2,400. So it's gonna be light on in that investment department. 4.1 for Rops, he will be able to get out of Silent Step 4 with the Kevlar, but then the U2, it's gonna be missing. So limits the options for Carrigan to call as openings for the CT side, as well as the ability to block it. Well, tactical timeout called as we will go through the Eco Bash. Yeah. Always lovely to have, but just the easiest of kills you'll find. But a timeout called by Katowice champion himself. Neo. When we looked at the last gun round they played, Alex, it was a bit more passive, right? They were trying to set the tone over towards a ramp with an aggressive stack from Rain and Rops. Take that territory. They weren't fighting for that mid control. This time they do not have the Brokey AWP. Carrigan has brought out the Org to try and give himself the ability at range, and maybe he feels a little bit flustered after that fight where he jumped out of market in towards the B-Jewel and used a few too many bullets not to connect the dots. The Spirit go for a pace change themselves. They have everything they want and more. It's the window, can't smoke. Again, chop up. Dissuading middle. This time he's going for a deeper. Molly, that's to help Magics get this control. You can see, if anybody jumped out towards Underpass, they would have been fully committed towards that fight. And they are really bullying Carrigan, aren't they? He's whipped out the Orc for this exact engagement. Is Donk going to be able to best him? With Carrigan's eye pressed to the scope, the barrel betrays Donk. Now the information flows only one way, and it's Carrigan's day onto Donk. Oh, oh Zontix is nade as he finds him. Just as he tried to drop the defensive smoke, if they find Frozen, it's awkward. He can't do it! And it just built beautifully into Spirit's round. Carrigan got the opening, but look how quickly the phase pieces fall. It's just rough. You've got Don going up against Carrigan on this head-to-head, -head, and Carrigan gets the better of him. You need more from Frozen there. But it's a difficult position. Sure, the rotation is on the way. And right now, so is the hunt. Chomper's already looking for Rops and Rain. He knows where they reside, or at least has a pretty rough idea. Rain might get the jump on him here if he continues to clear. Chomper will be below the Oh, it's a hard adjustment. Yeah, he does get the better of him. I don't think anybody else from Team Spirit need to chase this down. 2,900, we can get two dropped M4s. That's if FaZe want to buy again, but this is some of the issues. You're not going to have as many gun rounds to work with in an MR12, and you're not going to have full buys if you continue to drop weapons. It'll be lacking utility again, which once more, sure, it's great to have the guns, but you need the smokes to slow them down. You need the mollies to try and take some space. The nade back from Zontix was great, perfectly placed, and even the follow-up. Shira ready for that rotation, and yeah, frustrations for Frozen, but they will buy again. Rops and Rain dropping the guns, no weapons for them. Carrigan needed the Org to best Donk in the previous. They've also even tried putting Frozen up there aggressively. They might need to try and fight for this mid-control. And they are, so Team Spirit hear all of this. Molly, mid-box, nades back, flashes over. We'll just sit back, we'll allow you to limp through all of these nades. We don't even need to take the fight just yet. <gasps> Frozen on the reload. Was exposed, and Molly now behind the boxes keeps the options limited. But I don't mind this from Spirit at all. Take a look at all their util that they still have remaining. Three smokes, five mollies, flashes, and Zontix having a search out apps has been obscured for now. Fight towards middle. Yeah, Frozen and Rops tested, and this time they pass with flying colors. That's what you need. Shut down. Returns us to an equilibrium four to four. Zontix alone up against the whole phase squad.
Rain Corp investigating towards the ramp. Roki needs to find the response and will. But taking some active engagements there. And Frozen and Rob's names we need to be saying a whole lot more of if they want to equalize this to a 1-1 grand final. Yeah, I love that round. We get the highlight of the smoke heading over towards Palace, then the push still following through middle. Trying to come out relatively dry was Spirit. Gonna have to win another one of those and maybe even one more consecutively for FaZe if they want to even try and break this money for Team Spirit. But as they win rounds, the Lost bonus builds if the bomb goes down, if guns get saved. So it's so it could be very difficult for FaZe to take control of this first half of play. That's the first time we've seen them fight for mid in that fashion. Spirit, we're feeling comfy. T side, four rounds, all good. And they still have a full buy. No AWP for Shiro, however. And that was a choice. He still has 5k left in the bank. Similar opening, top mid smoke, no insta window this time. Chopper through the paces, nades rattled. Roki down to 21. They tried that last round this and look time. Look what they returned to immediately. Nade mid, fake it, send straight back over towards A and go for a set piece. And right now they're still investigating short phase. You've got one B apps, you've got two short. It's only going to be the likes of Rain and that shattered Broki to defend this A site. Yeah, and that re-smoke window it sells it even yeah, more. They now they come. A barrage of nades, don't forget Broki, he's been naded down. A single bullet will Molly. finish him. They're mollying his position, stands his ground, still connects on the AWP. Cut down by Shiro into the site. It's Rain through the smoke. A tornado of bullets hailing down onto Spirit. And Chopper in the clutch finds the first of an impossible task. Frozen, stand, need one from Rain. It's all him, quad kill. New mouse, no problem, he's still here. Yeah, he's finding himself, isn't he? Very, very important player to have online. We know he's a big game player. Major MVP, Rain. And this is crazy. The transfer, the double through the smoke, you'd love to see it. Beautiful work from the vet. And really have to credit Brokey there, was under so much pressure. He took the nade damage early, repositions towards CT. He plays ahead of the execute. A lot of other orpers would have shied away. They would have played behind the smoke, said, boys, I can't fight, I'm too low. Went towards that firebox, even delivered a kill. Admirable. And it was just those two. They had to be the first names in the feed for FaZe. And I said it wouldn't just be one round, it would be a couple consecutive needed to break the bank of Spirit. So they have been able to drop weapons across. There are two Galils in the mix, but still, as far as it goes, this is a full buy for Spirit. They get another crack. Chomper flashed off by Ray. Roki constructs a gap, a sight line towards the top of middle, frozen. Directed a boost of his own design, just on the off angle. The calm before the storm once more. Curious right now to see if they try and lob out these smokes and then let magics work through the underpass. Traditionally, if you go for an AX kit, it's going to draw your connector player. But with the CT setup, we can see they've hedged towards short. So two players short, two over towards A, Brokey with the AWP in market. Here comes the util. Donk. Going head hunting. Rain will start to go into the line of fire. Still nails the headshot, wins the head to head with Donk. Four versus four, all to play for. A bomb on Shiro, Shopper's joining him. Some ticks towards the palace position. Magic's this lurker now trying to puff up his chest mid. I'm gonna have a 2v4 here on A. Oh, it's frozen, good for it, mid no longer a threat. Shiro has found rain, but will they find Roth? He's very low HP. This could go horribly wrong for FaZe. If Roths leaves this round empty-handed, and he won't. Finding Chopper, Wallbang, trying to suppress him. Brought him low, Shiro will finish the job. They know where they both are. 15 and counting, Brokey has to nail this shot. Brokey has to nail this shot, and he does! Stressful. 
drawn out there in the mid round. Rain on to Donk, important head to head, something to highlight. But not battered and bruised, face. Managed to eke together three consecutive rounds. One where four survived, one where two survived, and now one where Brokey wins out the 1v1. Zontic's in transition, difficult for him. And the crowd loves seeing a flustered donk. I'll tell you what they love more, a celebrating Carrigan. Third tactical timeout called within the first half of Spirit. What does that mean? Ali's not happy with four, that's what that tells me. He's about to do this the hard way. Three consecutive gun rounds to eventually break Spirit, who didn't back down, they didn't make it easy, they kept the rounds close, and they know that the finances aren't flourishing for FaZe just yet. But two rounds left in this first half of play. They've opted for the safer of the options and swinging out mid. Rops will oblige. Up and down, looking for space. Now you welcome the challenge. Brokey has been flashed off the angle. It's hard to track multiple targets, but it's Brokey racking them up. Evasive maneuvers from Brokey, a single bullet from that Deagle. Donk looking human in this one as well. Sure, he's found a couple of nice openings, but just kept to six kills so far. Nuke, we couldn't stop saying his name. It was multi-kill after multi-kill. As this one will just fizzle out, Magix and Zontix. X is at the end of the name, about, X is about to be on the eyes. Don't want to give up too many more casualties if you're phasing this, you need to... Oh, keep up at least three, Alex, because I might need to drop guns in the next. Yeah, Magic's done a lot with this deagle. And not shying away from the Ed engagement. On your head! But Brokey's here as well. Now up to eight kills, sure, three of those just came against a might investment, but if he starts finding confidence, Rain is on form. We've already seen Rops clutching, Carrigan's had some very important rounds of Frozen. He just needs to get his necessary kills. These are almost firing on all cylinders. This is the big stage, this is where they do their best work. Final round, first half, map two. Could it be eight? Spirit haven't lost Mirage in some time. Both on the drop. This could be a wake-up call. Phase the ones knocking. Looking to exploit B again here. It worked for them consistently, but Carrigan knows that. They've sent Brokey there to start. The early warning system. Window smoke from Chopper to imply multiple bodies. Brokey hasn't moved. They're coming for him. Chopper coming up short side as well. Missed shots. Donk already has taken down Carrigan. Frozen needs to deliver. He's already found one. Brokey into the site. What can you do? Hard shot to hit is Donk with an impactful double. To leave with five, bomb now to be planted. Zontix gets it done. Bomb has been planted. Rain has the potential to have another impactful round. He strafes into Donk. They can't get past him. A triple kill to secure it off the back of the timeout. Frozen caught off. Magix delivers, and there's nothing here. Nothing for Rops. Donk has got it. It's a quad kill. Finds his footing on the second map of this grand final. It's seven to five as FaZe look to return the favor.
Map two, best of five, Intel Extreme Masters Katowice. We are live and direct from Katowice, Poland, looking to crown a champ here this Sunday. Second half of our second map. Team Spirit have five to work with as they move to the CT side. FaZe now take to the attack. Carrigan calling the shots. Crowd favorite, looking to equalize with a map win on their opponent's pick. They execute, here it comes. They've got the people here. Shiro, Donk. Sharp shooters, good flashes. Brokey's a dead man, and just like that, Donk delivers. Shiro puts the cherry on top. A heist of a round immediately face sent back to spawn. What makes that feel good is like not how clean the round was, but the fact that you've called three players in A, and this is the execute that you are prepared for. This is perfect. You love this. And not only does this feel chopper with confidence that they've called a perfect pistol, Donk, where he picked up in the last half, in the last round with four kills, just grabs another three. No plant, no galils. You make it oh, so much easier for yourself on the CT side if you could stop that bomb going down, that extra cash injection of 800 bucks. It means you don't have to prioritize rifles. You can get the util out, you can get these SMGs. Chopper is just rocking a pair of dual Berettas. They only have one M4 and that's in the hands of Donks. They're about to farm up some phase players. Still trying to will phase into victory, uh, the Katowice crowd. Be one hell of a rude shock if they were brave enough. Come on, Donk, jump out. Yeah. See how that goes for FaZe. Oh, oh. Sure. Yeah, it could be even better if you get it with an SMG. Spots out the toes of Brokey. You tell Donk just wants to jump into the den. But rerouting. These rounds, as much as we just see the time tick down and the pistol's not finding an awful lot, soak out that U2. Only two smokes, a flash, and an incendiary remain. That'll all need to be reinvested in. Kills, a plant. Well, dead, a dream phase, because with only 35 seconds, I don't think that's a possibility. And I'll, ooh, although there's three of them, avoiding the MP9 would be a bonus. Rain cut down by Sheer Rose. It's Donk on the rifle here for at least two. And he'll find three. So same as the pistol, suddenly Donk catapulted up to 16 total. All right, well, these next few are about to be the ones that come with impact. Rain voiced his concerns in that first half of play. Some extremely impactful rounds over towards the A bomb site to stunt Spirit, but we find ourselves tied at 7-7. And with those SMGs in the mix, Shiro getting the upgrade into the AWP. Chopper will take the SMG. Start three towards A, one window off Shiro. Molly behind the mid box, stalling out this mid progress and Zontix to contribute from short. So B left open for now as Shiro rotates over, spamming through, tagged up Carrigan, looking for this space. They want to get his team into a mid round. Allow Brokey, Rops, and Frozen, the young guns, to play out these 3v3s, 2v2s. That's where they can do some of their best work, but you need to make an incision first. Lots of U2 expended for phase just to get this mid control. Molly's going to make things hot under the collar as they go for the window boost. Rops up. Oh, Nade could ruin the day. Rops' his reaction to this. Donk's not ready for it. Rops will take the spray. Spots another. Rops has come to play. No mid round and no casualties for Shiro and Magix. Does he go overlooked? That's a possibility. Worrying about ramp. This can pack a punch. Could deny it. Oh, Carrigan, he gets the bomb down, but now Magix has lost the element of surprise. With a low HP, Rain is brave. That nade's got his name all over him. He finds Frozen. Could have been something for Shiro, but he's not going anywhere near that A bomb site. Hasn't fired a shot yet, so they don't even know that it's equipped. FaZe also need to hold on to these rifles, so I don't know how far they would like to push the issue in the pursuit removing Shiro's purchase. But that right there, timing and Counter-Strike, it's a cruel mistress. Donk just felt that the hard way Rops avoids disaster by mere moments, and he becomes the hero for FaZe to secure their eighth. The volley below window, I think it makes them think they're ahead of that boost, right? They were able to segregate and stall that out, but that was a fallacy. 
Yes, here it is, the clear. Thank you very much, says Robs. I'll take two for the troubles. Magic's oh, spanner in the works. And Rain doing his own stunts. But yeah, you can see Zontic's asking the question. They will buy again behind the saved orb. So same buy. We go again. Same buy. Will it be a different result? Yeah, look how confident Donk is. Unfazed as he finds the first. Tracking Carrigan through smoke, flashes. Precise on his M4. I found the solution immediately. He says we can't be giving up that mid space, and he just stood tall. Almost out like a sore thumb. Finds the first, gets away, number advantage. Carrigan having to move the pieces from the grave now. Look at this ramp surge. Info play from Spirit. Oh, we're not ready for the boost. Frozen's been caught off guard by that, but topples it. Gets them to dismount. Forced forward by the flame. Two of them standing in the open. No response from Frozen. It does put one onto Doc. Puts him low. Have to know this is coming. Rob's applying so much pressure, but the nade is good. And now the wide swing from Zontix falls flat. Doc beneath him. Knee oh. break. It's broken. Still one from Magix on the MP. No, and has he got two? Round defining from Magix. Just gets under FaZe's skin, under their fingernails. And look where Chopper's gotten off to. That ramp pusher highlighted about 20 seconds ago. It's coming to fruition. So they know that Frozen cannot be coming through the B apartments now. Mm. That allows Magix to train towards short. Frozen doesn't even know where he's getting shot from. The silence then four makes things very awkward. And this one is done. 20 seconds left. Is he even going to give it a go? He's not so sure. Frozen packs it up. Shiro doesn't even need to do anything with the AWP. Just his mere existence alone is apparently enough as you really have to look at how jarring that was over towards short. They were able to stall out fighting together. The response from Donk taking an aggressive stance in middle knowing they can't just give up that real estate for free. So a response. As we trade rounds and Spirit back into winning ways on the CT side. So here it is. Yeah, the flash. So Carrigan ahead of it. Brokey with a leap of faith. And Magic's with a... Whoa. Yeah, pound for pound, that MP9, it packs a punch. Oh, FaZe, they have bought in. It's going to be a difficult round for them to fight with. Lots of util towards mid again to draw the attention, but once more, Spirit have plenty of bodies towards this A bomb site. Carrigan spotted out. Chopper. Magic stays. Makes the call. Should be Magic's. The flash timing works well, but here is Donk again. Nearly gets Robs as well. Shiro will finish it off. It should be fine. Brokey caught. Chopper aggressing. And only Reigns Tech 9. So reactive, so immediate. Spirit attending to the gap. Felt like they were ahead of the play anyway, just by having the player up on the balcony. As soon as Carrigan sees one individual jump spot in towards CT, he thinks it's a retake setup. And there was also pressure aggressive middle onto Rain. So at that point, you think they're doing it all in mid control. They just had more pieces that I think FaZe are accounting for, and the wind has definitely been taken out of the sails now. So it's felt back and forth, but the opportunity for Spirit to extend this lead. Second time out, Neo on the mic. Money not there for a buy. Now, if we reflect back on Nuke, they were able to win a round with an investment which will look quite similar to the one you're seeing take shape on the right-hand side of your screen. But Halley issuing his orders as well. Look out for these deagles. Look out for this lighter buy. And there's no team quite like FaZe Clan of pulling these rounds out of their hat. Five smokes, so they can throw something standard towards middle, maybe make Spirit question exactly what the purchases are looking like on the other side. $28,000 investment versus five. And a standard CT setup coming into play. So not playing in the site or CT, as Spirit, you can see. Chomp up, playing from over towards Connector, clearing out middle. Don's confidence surging at one point. When we mentioned his name, he only had six frags. Now he's up to 19 as the smokes leave spawn late. They're doing cat once more. They are just going to stand and fight. 
So they've denied the mid-box cross. They want to make their presence known top mid. Window smoke available, connector again. Two through the underpass. The window boosters work before and on this very stage. Oh. oh, Donk knows. That's a sound cue. That's a, still a frag. He's ready for the potential for Rock's close. Backs away. Wise to their tricks. It's Zontic short. Donk, the gatekeeper of jungle, has been smoked off. Shiro, hard shot to hit. It's frozen on the staircase. Chopper and loading his magazine. It invites Rock's in for a frag. Hold on. Zontic's, he needs to get away. They have the man advantage. A good shot from Frozen. A bomb plant would be welcome, but yeah, he's been punished for trying it. And there we have it, well handled. Zontix gets himself three necessary frags to extend their lead on their map pick. A little bit scary for a moment, didn't it? But well handled from Spirit, and they feel like they're in control. Map number two, this streak, remember 12 on the trot from this Spirit team on their home map, really making a mark on Mirage. This will be 13, and this will put them up 2-0. In the best of five, just one map away with Overpass up next. Yeah, you heard uh, Maniac on the desk. His uh, prediction involving Spirit winning one of the first two. Well, how about both of them? They missed them. Oh, no, they didn't. Never mind. Look at this, though. That's brave from Rain. He's taking some space. Zontic spam. I don't think Rain has a kill in the second half yet. That can change in an instant. Smoke towards the window. Smoke. Key word for this mid-exchange. First fades. Rain investigates. Deploys another. Deeper. This duo. Parned up with Frozen. It's Donk on the other side of that smoke. Zontix is called mid clear. Oh, and it's Donk. Kept honest. Frozen gets the trade. Good night. Wow. Garrigan's ears are ringing. It's Brokey hitting shot. Zontix kept humble. Just the one. Magic still adjusts on Sandwich. A clutch for Frozen, perhaps. He can hold on. Inject some confidence into the phase ranks. He's going for the plant safe. There's a nade. Shiro has a HE. Hasn't gone for it. David Sonansky with three in the round. Filling the boots of twists on the grand final stage. He dances with Shiro, closing the gap. Dancing around towards Firebox, spots him out, needs the mag. Shiro versus Frozen, and it's Shiro who prevails! Saves their hide. That could have been a whole lot of confidence for FaZe. Instead, it's 11 for Spirit. And if we're looking at the DNA of FaZe, that's the type of round that they have to win. That is where you turn to the players to be able to pull off these 1v2 situations. But Frozen are not able to do it. And Magic's again. That Joker, that unknown entity activating late. And Spirit playing this AWP of Shiro over towards B quite often. It's allowing so many riflers to deal with middle, whether it's short, window, connector. And Frozen's frustrations really needed that one, and you can see he knows it. Yeah, timeout taken. Understandably, just have 30 seconds. Cool yourself off. Uh, look, uh, we know that comparisons are the thief of joy, but Twist is the type of player that in these big games has these big moments that can change the course of a map, and Frozen is replacing exactly that. That clutch, we could be having a different conversation. Not being able to pull it off now. Spirit just need two more rounds. This was to level the series 1-1. Face, you gotta dig deep. Well, this run of the Dark Horse, it is the year of the dragon. Yeah, this Dark Horse is galloping towards a 2 0 lead in the grand finals. Criminally underrated. Not for much longer. Look how worried they are. Obviously, nobody defaulting to lock down the B apartment's push. And 
that might be a problem. Magics might be the problem. Over towards A, he's been a loose piece, causing issues as they scale in towards the side. Now he has vacuumed up a whole lot of room. It's forced out Spirit to rotate heavily over towards A. 50 seconds left. They have a good idea what's coming. Can they hit the shots required? Oh, wow. Sontix and Shiro have, but that's frozen in the feed. He lives to tell the tale of his first exchange with Donk. Bomb's committed. How's Kerrigan getting to get this one down? Chopper can activate. Chopper can deny. He's just going to have him. Needs some cover. Robs at least gets the trade, but it's Shiro that builds the round. Frozen. Less favored now in a one versus two with it all to do. Just run down by Shiro. That is confidence right there from Shiro. Here I come. Yeah, you want to play fun and games in a clutch situation? There's a bullet right between the eyes. Of course, it's Shiro again. Yeah, and that is two rounds in a row where Frozen probably thinks he has a chance. Well, back to reality. And Chopper, the, yeah, look, the order of this, Robs is doing his best to cover, but think about how many positions he's having to worry about. There's no combination, nowhere safe. His phase are about to falter again. Spirit looking so damn good. Up the ramp. Bit more pace to this. Pep in the step. Chopper timing window. May not expect someone so far forward in the sandwich position. Good fight from Brokey. Donk is down. Frozen onto Chopper into the site and smoke off. The orb cannot contribute. That bomb's going down a whole lot earlier this time. Face that's something, and that's more from Frozen. Warming into things. Zontix clears. It's a big find. Brokey's low, and I said Rain hasn't fragged this second half. I, I think that remains true. An opportunity to change that in a compulsory round. Well, they are down 2-0 in this best of five. Rain, good angle. Oh, doesn't finish it. Chiro's shoulder baits him out, goes running and gunning. He's gone. They need to be on the bomb, and Brokey secures it. They survived the night, Chad, but there's more ahead of us. Only just, and everybody's just gone down to the server. This is where we need to take stock. The inventory comes out for both teams. Have a look at what buys we can get through. It's going to be bleak. Both teams are likely to invest. Even with Spirit losing that round, 1,900 loss into the next. And, and Rain, this mouse situation, we didn't think it would plague him because he was able to find impact. But in the second half, he's really struggling. They're not going to go all in, so Spirit, just going to upgrade into some pistols here. I don't think they're allowing FaZe to get to 10. They might just snatch it away, especially if Dom just runs up mid, hammers them with a deagle, can't do it. And just as Rain was starting to look good, we can't have lost him for the series. He's a big game player. There's four more to get through. Double digits is what they mustered last time in the group stage. Flash over, it's good, but Carrigan. Stay strong, converts that. FaZe need to keep as many bodies alive as they can. You can see they're operating with Galils anyway. to see the full buy. Shiro's AWP not available. How does that change the complexion of the CT setup? They have been quite dynamic. Felt like they've always had more personnel than they've needed. And that's tripped phase up more often than not. Donk letting his ears breathe. Headsets in ears. That's a change from the group stage.
Doesn't seem too bothered by it. Get the, uh, the big boys out once you get the crowd in play. Still playing his game, it's Donk. He's comfortable just walking up mid. This is an aggressive CT maneuver to start, and he's going to be calling mid clear. Or is he? Now it is on terrain, frozen trades. Carrigan may overlook this forward position of Magix. Times it to perfection again. A huge contribution, a crucial one from Magix. Puts them in the lead. This is on to Frozen. Big find. Huge find. Hope reignites for FaZe. Chopper, default side. Head on a swivel is Brokey. Timing's everything. Chopper hasn't finished his meal. Brokey onto 14 HP. Goes wide. Covered by Rops. Magix, can he continue to lay waste to FaZe? He's caught again. Zontic's thrust into a one versus three. Is he going to give it a look? 2400 loss into the next. They're not going to have a lot to operate with. Zontic's well aware of that, but still giving this one a look. Diffuse kit not there. And bottom spotter. It's the trio. Brokey, Frozen, and Rops. They are the ones delivering. Rain's gone cold. Carrigan's calling a good game. And Frozen, I think he's fed up of not converting those clutches. This type of purchase, FaZe have spirit right where they want them for an overtime. Let's take this one the distance. Frozen taking the necessary risks now, not playing with fear with the back against the wall. Good luck, have fun. Final round. Oh, and Shiro! The orb hasn't done a lot, but the scout has. That's a massive find. They're walking with a limp in a must-win round. And the Spodex silenced by one scout shot. Oh. And look at this immediate reaction. The desk highlighted the proactive nature of Spirit. Oh, this is heads-up Counter-Strike. And look at the stack on the other side, the smoke to block the shotgun of Magix. He has been everywhere. This would be crushing. Of all the ways for it to go down, a scout, a shotgun, a menagerie of weaponry. Magic does it! Carrigan has found it! And we play on a little longer. Chopper onto Rops, though. Big on the MP9. That scout's still a threat. The flank is fast. Hold on. Chopper's doing it all right now. Phase. They just have to count on Carrigan and Frozen. Here comes Zontix. It's going to end right here. Unless Frozen can do the impossible. It's two. That is going to hurt FaZe. They put Spirit right where they wanted them. Down to an absolute miserable buy. And Spirit find a way to keep the streak alive. 13 in a row on Mirage. Their home turf for a reason.
As if anybody is surprised, Spirit, Team Spirit, and the Doculation continues as we go into what it will be the third map. Spirit up two, and well, I don't think we would have saw it coming in quite thick and fast as we've got it, but we damn sure do. Welcome back to the Intel Extreme Masters in Katowice. It's Grand Finals Day here in 2024. Hey, wow. We did it. We got all the rounds. We got there. Yes, and we're discovering some new layers to this team spirit. What if I told you this was the most phase-esque way to close them up against phase with a scout with a bunch of MP9s being pushing around? Have a taste of your own medicine, bud. Of, of course. And it could be that simple. Or better yet, it could be that wonderful, which is exactly who won our 1x bet clutch of the event so far. Let's take a quick look at that. Oh! He's actually a problem for Na'Vi as he gets spammed right through it. Wonderful, he's a clutch, and he might be good for it. Five for the man! Yes, wonderful. Not here today, and that much we know for sure. But we do know that the Donk Show continues. So, we get the Mirage. What is the stature of both of these teams when we get the Mirage? I think what makes this map so scary for FaZe fans is the fact that Team Spirit was able to grind out yes. a game in the grand final on this stage against FaZe Clan, right? Like we know that they're really, really good from playing from ahead, being able to close out those games where they have an advantage, but this one, FaZe is starting to come back. The win was right there for mm -hmm. Spirit. You can feel it slipping away the last round. You're on your hat. You've watched them do this to other teams so many times. Now you're in that position but you don't falter. Not only does the Shiro, Shiro get the scout kill, that's not the main thing that happened in that round. The main thing that happened was the info play on push. B. The push on B, even if he didn't get that kill, I think that play in itself decides the round for, for Spirit sooner or later. Yeah, definitely. Chopper, uh, grand job with the MP9 as well on top of that, but you're right, the information was already out there. And you would feel like being in Spirit's shoes at this point, when you have lost the round, that you've lost some of these late round situations, phase in their own way, signature clutches at the end, you think you're being the dumpster, but no, they, they remained composed and they were able to win this round 24. Huge applause, huge praise for Spirit able to be 2-0 here. Right at the very end, too. And you think like, hey, this has got overtime written all over it, and then again, weird buys come out, and the next thing you know, we reverse it all the way to round five. That'd be rough. Yeah, I think we were talking a lot about Last Mirage, you pointed it out in the pregame. Good start for FaZe. On Nuke, they win Pistol, they lose the Force by Here they win it and convert. They lose the first gun round and we go into the reset round, round five. And it is the same story as I told you guys in pre-show. It's Chopper crafting solutions as we speak. He's doing a little bit of action towards middle, trying to sell the idea that, hey guys, we're gonna put our bet in the contact. Here, the shoulder peak from Donk is absolutely spectacular. But this is where I wanna talk about Spirit and their mid-rounding. It is a very open situation, 4v4, low HP on Donk. And that info play from Shiro, that little jump, finds Frozen, just zones in on to him, gets the kill, and it's immediate cold. The bomb is already back towards the B side. Carrying in a try to treat, cheat his way, rather, out of B. He's being spotted here. That's a shoulder information being given, and Spirit will put on two. But this was a rough round to win. Once again, they found solutions in moments where FaZe had everything they needed under control. I think Frozen got a little curious in that round. He got punished, but you have to give it to Spirit. What a way to reverse the actual situation. I mean, that was just gut-wrenching for Frozen, because he sees the connector players where sort of go into the smoke, then he hears Shiro, and and he's stuck between a rock and a hard place, trying to just get one kill, knowing he's in a tough spot. Then Shiro with the jump info peaks, yes. spots him, and he loses the fight. You know, Frozen with a couple of unfortunate rounds, couldn't really get himself going. There was that 1v1 to Shiro as well. Shiro. Those are the types of rounds we're used to face win, and Chad pointed it out in the cast, you know, Twist, for example, would step up in some of those games, but in the end, just not enough for face. Well, even Frozen on Catwalk right there, right? Like, your, your crosshair's pulled in so many different places, you're worried about so many different threats. I don't know how you approach it any differently until you get caught with your pants down. Yeah, but I don't know, like, what the game plan was for Spirit. I think it was really interesting on their CT side, because I don't know who was holding what. They were everywhere. Players were swapping sides, right? They got so many good reads on phase. You know, mm. Magus, he's hiding in Sandwich. He's hiding in Ninja. Then a different round. He's on B. He gets the trade kill on Broken, then to Rops on Balcony. That's another reset round, right? Like, I think it was very hard for phase and for Kerrigan to sort of get a read on who's where and what's the mid-round mid looking like uh, in this game. What's the round of eight looking like, Yanko? When you, when you roll back the years here, or rather I say the hour or so. Yeah, I think, again... 
Another round from the first half, as you can see, right, the buy for FaZe here, it's not ideal, and we have this early mid fight from Frozen. I absolutely love it. It's halfway through the round that they get this mid-aggressive, half-aggressive push from Frozen and Rob. They find the two kills, and this was this creates momentum for you. This gives you win in your cell, because it's a full-on, perfect round where you've punished that mid-aggression that we were talking about. And another theme that we haven't really touched on, Donk was sort of muzzled in the first half. That True. in itself yeah. is a bit of a vision already. Rain was able to find him a couple of times. We saw frustration on the side of Don when he tried to get these push out of ramps, try to get these push out of middle, being completely put down. And that's why if you're phased, life sucks right now. Because you had it, you had your win condition. You put Don in his place in the first half. Spirit were anyway able to ground six, uh, grind six rounds. And then we move on to the city side, as Yanko pointed out, very, very hard to know where the, the gambles are going. Spirit always on the move. But at the end of that first half, you know, what, what were we feeling going into the second half of play there, Yanko? What did you see within the last rounds? Yeah, I think, you know, FaZe did a good job of sort of recovering. They end up with a 7-5 half. I think that's great. We're talking about T sides from Spirit. But this round was Brocky before this misses a shot on Donk. He's holding B apps from Kitchen. Doesn't get the kill. Donk jumps out, already kills Kerrigan. Now gets a kill on Brocky and will get the third one on Rain. I think he even closes it out Four. with the last frag on Robs. And that's all it takes, right? Like you're set up for that frag. You have him in your sights. You miss and he destroys you. Definitely. Destruction. Made all the difference in the end in a 13-11 game. Yeah, it really did. All the way down to the wire. And uh, speaking of which, Shiro, also another one that we've got on, on the line here, on the wire. Yes. Listen, this map is exactly what you're hoping to see from Shiro if you're a Spirit fan and if you're excited about him joining this team. We know that the light, the spotlight is mainly going to be on Dong, but there are moments where an AWP has to have a solid wrist and stabilize and lock down situations. Two very key clutches from Shiro. This is the round we saw against Forzen, and at the very end as well, he keeps his cool with the pistol when he pushes. That that's exactly what you need from him. You need him to dig you out of bad situations because this map was on a knife's edge the whole way through. If it wasn't for Shiro, I don't even care about that scout shot, just the stabilization he brought to the team. That's what he brings. And I think we saw even nurse from him on the first map. A couple yes. of those clutches that FaZe was able to win. We were, you know, scratching our heads like, what the hell is he Shiro doing in this round? You know, what, what, what's That's a new situation. What's he thinking, right? But managed to sort of stabilize himself on Mirage. And now the most important thing is Spirit aren't done yet, you know. They still need to win that last map. And sometimes we see when you're so close I to know. the victory, yep. it starts creeping in that feeling, oh my God, we're actually doing it, but it's not over yet. But hold the phone. Because yes, we do have overpass in front of us. It is a phase pick. It is a Spirit CT start. But first, the DHL MVP vote. ESL.gg slash DHL MVP. Well, look, I'm going to break it down real simply for all of you Twitch viewers out there in chat. Use your Twitch channel points to go ahead and vote for the player that you want to be the MVP of this here Grand Final. Now, we will catch up with this player at the conclusion of the Grand Final itself. And hell, I think we can get him up here on the desk. So it's our treat, really. But again, only counts if you get in there and get your votes into the Twitch chat. Now, gentlemen, that does it for Mirage. We're putting away Nuke. Let's talk about Overpass here and what to expect for FaZe in the terms of a rebound, if possible. I really think it's still doable for FaZe, right? I mean, it was gut-wrenching how they lost on Mirage, but Overpass is a key map in this whole best of five final. You know, that's where Spirit looked the weakest out of the maps that they played. We know that Kariga, Neo, they're capable of coming up with a good game plan. And I feel like if they can win Overpass, that changes the tide sort of. Then the momentum maybe starts switching a little bit to the side of FaZe Clan. But you know, as you're saying this, I just, I'm, I'm looking over there, you got this smug looking Swiss <laughs> guy, and he's just like, nah, bud, nah, the donculation continues. I think it's uh, it's Donzel Washington. That's what we're looking at Denzel right there. Washington. 
Tim. Listen, for a few reasons. First of all, if you are refusing the idea of Spirit winning, you are on your last leg right now. Your last leg is the fear of winning. That's the one argument that you have for you. It's not about surviving pressure. It's not about winning wonky, janky rounds. It's not about having a momentum against you because they've crossed all of that. They've ticked all of these boxes up until now. So you only have one argument to hide behind is now they have to win. Now you're talking about overpass. It's a map where adjustments have been made for phase in order to accommodate Frozen. Rain plays on the B side. You're going to have to have Frozen deliver an incredible A rifle performance, which we haven't exactly seen on, on the grand final so far. He's been timid at best. And on the other hand, you maybe have our friend Spirit on the CD side of Overpass. Man, I'm ready. But you know who's also been timid? Brokey. And if he wakes up and starts pulling some of his moves and puts some more frags on the board, I think that might be enough for FaZe to at least win one map and give themselves a chance here in the final. Or do they continue to get donkulated? But we'll let you do the math wherever you plan to do that math. We're going to go to a break. We're going to try to figure out some things on our end. We're still trying to crunch the numbers and see how the kid keeps doing it. But my goodness, this is the Intel Extreme Masters. It is a damn grand final. And you better believe Spirit are just one map away from grabbing it. We'll be right back after this. Place there, simple, just jumping casually into the side. Wait, 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 what, 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 what was that? Never miss a play again. Simple, it's not allowed. This is not FPL. This is a major. Finally, with Face It Watch, you're in control. Switch between player POVs live and see the game through the eyes of any pro. Never miss a moment with replays. Relive each highlight on demand from all angles. Watch it, control it, face it. the year it's the first tournament with my team playing I think really good but we are not in our best shape right now. He's pretty joyful person to be with it's funny and uh, he's the person who can bring great vibes. If I have for some negative vibes or something like this I I will like scream on enemies so I I won't keep it inside me. I was 
four years old. It was 1.6. You don't need to get some pressure from this crowd. You have to, to play just your game. Uh, might be like only in the beginning of the game because it's a uh, like new experience, new feelings because uh, you have never played in front of a lot of people who screaming loudly. Screaming itself. Uh, I think it's great. They have more personality because I, th I don't think that it's going to be entertaining watching the sports scene with players who have no personalities. It's time for the DHL Drop. Whether you are in the arena or watching from home, you can participate in the DHL Drop. Follow the steps for a chance to win amazing prizes. Hold up the DHL Drop sign or type exclamation point DHL Drop on the chat to enter. prepare for what could be the last map of this grand final. Team Spirit have set themselves up for glory. One map is all that separates them now from lifting that trophy in the center of the Spodek. Over past the battleground where FaZe and Spirit will do battle. Faze need to dig deep now, or is this inevitable? Spirit undefeated. In Katowice so far, they have only dropped one map. They dealt with Faze 2-0 in the group stage, and they're looking to keep that spotless record against the international beasts as Rain. Oh, hasn't tasted a kill now for 14 rounds straight. That's alarming. He did land one to the head. Agush connects, Donk and Zontix walking wonky. MC and Rushley are observers for this map. They have a different pace to this one. Faze yet to play on over pass here in Katowice. Despite the bomb, despite the majority of the Faze squad, Execute here through long. Smoke's available. Molly's flashes. Down a player. Chopper towards B has a flash ready. You can see him looking up from the graffiti position to support his teammates who have completely given up long. Faye should be in. Oh, he's missed his chance there, Shiro. Yeah, punished. Down low. Still though, Donk. A perpetual problem. Finding the headshot onto Frozen is now broke. He's turned to fall. And it's clean. It's as easy as that. I said they should be in. They're out as quick as you like. Opening kill goes against Rain. They get the space they're looking for. They execute, but, well, executing was spirit. Destruction, no plant again means the easiest of oh. second rounds about to come up. And this one is definitely losing. It's appeal with spirit raw. And the Dong Show, if this is the proving ground, if there were any more questions, what else does he have to do? Well, they have four sport. Without the second round planned, it's gonna be Tech Nines are plenty, P250 for Brokey. Phase the real test. Second round, jiggle out, magic faded in, Molly on 12. It's chaotic. But it's kept level. Carrigan worming for a little bit of space right now. You can see him on the X-ray now. In eyes. Has taken a lot of room towards bathroom. He's calling the team back. And with that util that we've highlighted, they could go for a smoke flash execute. It is just Shiro on the site for now. Jump spotting, looking for any information he can find. A HE could do wonders. As the util comes in, Shiro throws it out. And now Carrigan, oh, the supporting flash. 
They will go down as Zontix that activates with a nice double on the SMG. Oh, wow, what a shot from Rain. He's found a frag, he's found another dunk. The one to secure it, incredibly potent round there, but not enough from the investment of FaZe. Hey, good for him to break that spell, though, Rain. You know he's had woes with the mouse within that first half of Mirage. That's going to stick in anybody's head. Second half of Mirage, unable to get anything done whatsoever. Just one round away from taking it to overtime, and Shiro shattered those dreams with a scout shot heard around the Spodek. Zontix, the unsung hero, doesn't care if anybody's speaking his name or just there. Two very important kills on the rotation in and phase. Want to stay aggressive. Investment yet again. AKs, pistols invested around, knowing it came down to a one-on-one -on -one situation. They can keep that pressure on the CT side economy. But how long can you keep this up before you say enough is enough? You will need to find this breakthrough or it will be breaking point. Yeah, wow, you live by the sword, you, you die by it. I think they lose this, then they do take a save. Well, that's assuming they don't get the plan. Rotation coming back silently by Chopper now, so there will be more help towards A. Shiro, Donk, and Chopper. Now Don, the upper side of things. Jump spotting. Looking for answers and headshots. It looks so easy for Donk. A double dilapidated phase. Oh, one back from Frozen. He's only one standing with just two HP. Chopper's double from the FAMAS, thriving in the chaos. And this investment from FaZe. They were gunning for a round, now they're gunning for something. With 30 seconds left, survival from Frozen might be integral. What can you do? Now, backing off for the save, this is a miserable start to the half. Absolutely miserable. No plans in the first three rounds of play. Sure, the second was close. It came down to a one-on-one. -on -one. And this has almost been the story. Oh, Frozen, are you really going to give this a go? You, you can't brave that. Extinguish is there, he's through and he's dead, so just wanting to make sure he gets that lost bonus, and AK will be picked up for his troubles. Zomtix will like that. But think about the type of rounds the phase of one throughout this game. Clutches, lower buys, labored back and forth trades. Spirit have clearly been the better team, and that shows, and they've been the better team all event long. This is the coming out party for Donk and Co. Spirit, we've had different moments of excitement for them over the years, different iterations of rosters, but now they've dipped down to the academy and they found an absolute gem. Unprecedented scenes is again phased. They will invest, not fully. Lost bonus maxed out going into the next. This one has to be close. They need a couple of kills. You need a plant, you need something. Well, this is gonna fizzle. Aragon Audible, up con, swings out. Magic's looking for blood. They will go one and done. Nades, though, look at this. They're so ready, this barrage of utility. Kept at bay by the incendiary. More HEs, their efficiency, their team play. This is not just a solo performance. A cohesive unit, our team spirit. And there's a hush falling over the arena. I think right now it's sort of been sobering. This isn't back and forth, there's nothing on the board, there's nothing to pose. Carrigan looking desperate. And Donk looking bored. It's too easy for him, a double again. Shiro puts the cherry on top. And a 4-0 start. This defense has got it locked down. Finally, we'll see the full guns come out, but it always feels like Team Spirit are one step ahead. They take that space, the flash comes in, Magic setting the turn with the initial exchange, the util stalling them out even further. They regroup, they find a gap or what they think. It's a trap. In the den of the dragon, no AWP available for Brokey, but Shiro, we can't say the same. Didn't like the mood in Cloud9. Well, I think he likes the smell of Team Spirit. Yeah. It's the end of Rob's to this round. Zontix wins him out on the smoke spams. So risky with the smoke spams with the change of the smoke. It already was before. You want to talk about risk, you can see Zontix was considering it, but doesn't push the issue. And he is playing like somebody who is unfazed. Sure, he hasn't had the hugest of performances. We can turn towards 
the likes of Donk for that. Shiro, his right hand man. But Zontix has had some important rounds with multi kills. That Lurk Smoke does nothing. There's two players ahead of it. They've got Chopper to worry about long, still two players towards B. And FaZe. This isn't the type of map you can set the tone in the same way as an Ancient or an Anubis. This is your choice. T-side overpass already starting to become a waking nightmare for FaZe Clan. Flashes are good, unloading their magazines, Frozen and Carrigan, they're combining well, how is he still alive? Frozen, nade on his head, finishes it, now dead, it's five for Spirit. Another close one from FaZe, these narrow rounds, but Spirit prevail time after time and time out needed. They're in a pretty large hole right now, but this is T-side overpass, so if we're going to set some real barriers, Three feels like a minimum for FaZe. And that's touch and go. That's going to be difficult, especially if the pistol round in the second half goes against them. But so far, this is hollow. Defeat, currently, is the look in the eyes that I'm seeing of Carrigan. They're going to need to dig really deep to be able to pull this one off. And this was the final boss. This is the big stage team. This is the team that's meant to flourish under the lights. Well, right now, they're shying away from the moment and team spirit Running towards that magic number of 13. FaZe again can have something that is a threat, but that's by virtue of losing. Bittersweet. And this is where you'd hope that one of their individuals could pull off some crazy play. You've got one kill for Rops, one for Carrig, and one for Brokey. Five for Frozen Shore, three for Rain. I feel like that MVP is already locked up for Donk. Continuing that form, questioned at every turn. The goalpost kept moving. And he kept performing. And he hasn't stopped, of course. He's the first one to say this is a team game. And the way that he functions in the team is a thing of beauty. Right now, the sharpest tool in Spirit Shed and the sharpest tool in all of Counter-Strike. Just at 17 years of age, we've never seen anything like him before. Oh, the shadow betrays Carrigan. The AWP dispatches up him, and look at Donk do it! That's disgusting! Revolting from Donk! Once you eliminate the impossible, whatever remains, no matter how improbable, must be the truth. Donk is the truth, Alex. This kid is the real deal. How does he keep doing it? How? This is unprecedented, eclipsing all who came before him on the grand final stage. To the world of Counter-Strike, he is the meteor overhead. The confines of what's possible being brought into question every round this kid plays. Hey, Alex, Spirit started this tournament with a 13-0. No, no. There's no way FaZe Clan can suffer the beating that befalled Apex. Well, who's going to be their inspiration? Who's going to be the fire starter? Because the way that Carrigan's looking at the moment, I'm not sure how they get back into things. Rops did his absolute darndest on map number one. It was clutch heavy, very impactful on Nuke. It wasn't enough. Mirage, they gave it a go, a red hot crack, rain. Keeping Donk under his thumb in that first half of play, but in the second, couldn't muster a peep. There he is, Rops through the smoke. That's an opener, that's something to work with. And Donk uh, immediately won back. Down goes rain. Resmoke from Zontix, maintains. Incendiary delays. Smoke heaven. Might be the flash here, setting Carrigan up, but is it for success or is it failure? Zontix defends his sight admirably. Donk rotates back in, caught out by Frozen. The timing surely favors FaZe. Can they get past Donk? Brokey thinks so. The bomb going down for FaZe. It feels like the first time. A post plant erected. It is the first time. Will they convert? Chopper maneuvering into the fight. 
Setup established. Frozen has to hit this first shot. And it's Rops doubles up after finding the opening. He's found the closing spray as well. Shiro now holding on to his AWP. Will take out the hunt of Frozen. Broke retreats to maintain his. And Shiro calculated in his, ooh, AWP gone missing. Yeah, he's lost it. Well, that's the first round for FaZe. Not as labored, but you could definitely thank Robs for that. I was just talking about his heroics on Nuke. They get the first on the board, broke his AWP in the mix. More than enough money to issue another buy on the spirit side of the server, but already starting to rifle through that cash. I mean, that's the first step. Many more required to believe that FaZe Clan are here to fight tooth and nail through the series. Well, as you can see, Alex, I used the cast of curse to get them around on the board. You start talking about that 13-0 and poof, Magic. there you have it. Magic. Around immediately posted as FaZe. Would love to turn it to two in a row. They could break spirit, get that magic number of three, that bare minimum. On this T side is Donk for his aggression into the mix. Fires off some warning shots that may slow the crawl of FaZe Clan. And again, this battle obscured by the smoke consistently between Rob's Zontix. No openings here. Rain pushing forward, surges into the fountain position, investigates towards balloons. It's Shiro forward on long. It's Donk behind that toilet smoke. Forward crawl. Connector is theirs. Flying the phase flag. It's forced the rotation. Chopper had to worry about Long for a moment. Getting a move on back towards B. It was just a monster redeploy of the smoke. So that might have to change plans for phase as Rain lobs one out to at least show there's an indication there may be pressure. Chopper on the jump, mouth moving, Carrigan on the creep. Do they have a good read of this? Pieces in the right place, three smoke monster. Oh, and Shiro catches Frozen's excursion. It has to be Kerrigan. He does strike just the once. Whole solid hold so far from the CTs as Magix and Donk have taken the necessary steps to defend this site. With only 30 seconds, it's up to Brokey and Robs. And Zontix, the first and only victim of Robs. 20 seconds for the Orpa to make magic happen. He's feeling helpless now, and Shiro sends him to the Shadow Realm, a seventh for Spirit. Perfect deployment of utility on all fronts right there. Monster, I think we had at least three smokes, maybe four. You then found yourself with the molly towards short. Gave questions for Carrigan, well, I have to go, but segregated from his team. And while that was happening, everybody else was getting picked apart. He pushes in, Magix was caught back, turn still gets the kill. Donk at range onto Rain, who is going to be that pivot point. Brokey taking shots at nothing, and then Shiro will take him for free. So they win a round. They're in full control, Chad. Team Spirit. Their defense just seems too, too strong, too much for FaZe Clan to find another round. The bare minimum you set was three, and yeah, not looking too great for a second here. Well, look, they could go into the second half 11 1 down and then pull us all the way back, but <laughs> that's a very unlikely set of circumstances to unfold. Missed it. But all the same, the progression is taken. Map control. You can see, FaZe, they're the ones who are frazzled. They're the ones who are coming apart at the seams. Carrigan, Rops, Brokey, just two years ago, 2022, lifted the trophy. A barn burner of a match, taking on G2. Well, that was a quarterfinal game. They walked all over the mouse, who? And now they find themselves against Spirit. The only team they've lost to throughout their run at Katowice. Giving them troubles again. Testing Donk and punish for it. A double from Donk and the round just falls into place. Immaculate from Team Spirit. 
the truth, 15 and 4. Yeah, I think that sign is very apt. Is there anybody stronger? <laughs> I really didn't think we'd get the dog show, right? Like, I, I know Sian is believing, and there's been no reason not to believe. But the fact that he has been so absurdly consistent, and I'm just not meaning consistent of, yeah, you know, he's doing his job. He is playing Counter-Strike that is out of this world. We've never seen anything quite like it. The desk is flabbergasted. The internet can't stop talking about him. Pally now believes in God. Yeah, it's a revelation. <laughs> it is a revelation. And you've seen the photos. Donk winning his LAN event at 12 years old, surrounded by his elders. And now a few years on, he finds himself in the grand finals of the Intel Extreme Masters, making mincemeat of the experienced FaZe Clan. This is a story We'll be telling for many years. And when you look back over the two maps, sure, the scoreline might be close, but we return to the type of rounds that FaZe have been able to win. It's difficult. It's labored. This isn't easy. Three, one, one. Spodos getting awfully quiet. Fan favorites phase with one round to boast on this T side. Their map pick in this third slot of our grand final. Yeah, thinking this is a weakness, the Dust outlined Anubis and Overpass. Well, phase are the ones who chose to take it here. They had control of the first pick and the third. That's two out of the first three. You think it's a great chance to be able to set the tempo. Pick Nuke, no avail, going to Mirage. Now it's 13 on the trot for Team Spirit. An overpass, this is looking worse. Shiro spots out rain towards Conry Smoke Monster. Bomb on the back of Brokey, maneuvering towards the second letter of the alphabet. Still utility to spare. The timing of that one, impeccable. And now it's up to Magix, goes wide. Chips away at Carrigan. Look at the Molly, it's down perfectly. Rain will find it through the flames. 20 seconds. This gets awkward. Rotations here. Chopper's ready to unload his magazine. It's Magix in combination. Carrigan down next. It's too good from Donk, a double. And with 10 seconds left, what can Rops do? There's nothing for him here. He needs the instant headshot of Mishaw on the orb, but Magix is just playing with him. <laughs> laughing at him. Playing perfect Counter-Strike. Every move FaZe are making a step ahead of Team Spirit. One round out of 10 played, the bomb has gone down. One round. They are unable to penetrate these bomb sites. Overpass is closed for business. And the trophy is oh so close. Chopper, a journeyman, someone who has been through the ringer of Counter-Strike and then some. Your occasional upset here, your deeper run there. Oh, you've run up Banana with MAC-10s, that's cute. Yeah. Oh, your Spirit Team's hyped out of a player break, great. Full flat. Now, you've got FaZe Clan on the ropes. You've got Shiro by your side, an individual who was on one of the most hyped rosters in recent history. Cloud9 came together. Players from Na'Vi, and Cloud9 combined for what we thought was going to actually be the juggernaut. Well, Shiro, he didn't like how that team felt. Pulled the ripcord on that one. And now he finds himself on Team Spirit. Poor Art Frost had to be sacrificed, but if this is what we're going to get... What have you got for us, FaZe? You've tried everything. Every trick in the book is pace the answer. It's pace the remedy. Zontix, 20 bullets down, not a frag to be found. Into the side with the Tech 9-1. Big one back from Frozen. Chopper sat on his ass, jumping through the smoke. Magix can't swivel around in time, but Donk's still alive. Hold on. It's only Carrigan. Can he inject hope? They're pushing it. They're ahead of it. Carrigan slips past the smoke. Well ahead of it. Nice shot. Does it find Donk? No, he does not. A triple from Donk. 20 kills, five deaths. This 17-year-old Wunderkind is the truth. It's actually impossible to put it into words, isn't it? 
Astonishing scene. They're just always there. Astonishing scene. Every site, doesn't matter if it's late or early, you just run in and it feels like there's just this endless supply of CTs. Wow, this is uh, FaZe's chance to maybe post two. The final round of this half, and two is the most they can achieve. We're just going to sit back and enjoy what Spirit are doing. We compared the experience. We've got household names. Going up against... Well, who? I don't think that can be the question anymore. Team Spirit, this roster. These players, these individuals, they are functioning at the highest of levels. Carrigan considered a king in Katowice. This isn't his second, this isn't his third. His fourth Katowice final. And he's getting cut down, opening death. Uh, the way that Carrigan's approaching these uh, rounds on the T side is desperate. His players aren't there for him. He's trying to make plays every single time. Trying to be the hero. This time it's Zontix fully flashed off. Robs has found a way in. Magic just needs to stay alive. The rotation's coming. We know how they tend to feel. Frozen and Robs spotted out. Shiro already rotates through. Heaven now occupied as well. Chip damage from the nade. Robs will find a little bit of a jump from Chopper. It's Frozen that finishes. But now, just like that, Doc happens again! From the heavens, he rains down Hellfire. The Dragon, 11. Two away from the trophy in the center stage of the Spodek.
We're back, but for how long? Is this a game or is this just a formality? The third map of this best of five grand final spirit. Just two rounds away from being crowned champions in Katowice. And up against a giant. The story of David versus Goliath, the story of a kid up against a titan. But with a well-placed stone, solid aim, he did bring him down. And down on their knees are FaZe Clan right now. Down on their luck. There is an air of sheer astonishment in the Counter-Strike world right now of what we are witnessing. Sure, team game. We can say that sentiment until the cows come home, but Donk. The level of Counter-Strike that he has displayed at this event is unparalleled. Unprecedented. Brokey keeps us in a 4v4 in this pistol that essentially secures the championship. On the ropes, Rops empty-handed after his exchange. The Glock of Chopper puts him on his ass. Brokey knows he has to step up, noise cut dead. Paranoia grows. Steps now for Brokey. Carrigan readies his aim. One is great. Two is more than enough. And it's only Zontix now. Could he silence the crowd? Oh, no! No! Zontix! It's one more click away. Brokey starts the mind game machine. Zontix perpetually in the shadow of his teammate. He doesn't care. It's the accolades. It's the silverware. That's what he wants in the bomb. You can see it right in front of him. He will only have one option. 15 and counting. Brokey making an ambitious maneuver. Zontix has not considered it a fake plant. Brokey has to surely have this one now. Brokey! into the second half. The around the world maneuver to pull that one off, but they're gonna have to leave orbit right now if they wanna take down Spirit. They are soaring high, and even with this pistol round lost, sure, the opening kill is coming in favor of Spirit, but the back and forth flurry from FaZe, and then to win that one out, Zontix, <laughs> so much damage. Not bad from Frozen. Team Spirit, they know how close they are. They're not going to force the issue. I'll take a full eco. Almost of the cleanest varieties. It's just Zontix with an investment. Which he earned, most definitely, in that last one, unable to close. We got that bomb down. Could have been the difference between a force buy or not. That's true, too. But when you have so much runway, when the task ahead of phase feels like an impossibility, Long range on the MP9, Ray, he welcomes the engagement. In combination with Robs, they mow them down. One back from that D, gets all they have, but FaZe will convert. Again, I want to return to that first half, and maybe even a lot of the T rounds that FaZe have played. Carrigan's had to make these more desperate maneuvers on his own to try and find the space because his team just haven't been able to contribute. There's nothing that he can count on. Doesn't feel like there's anything he's been able to call. There's a surge from the crowd. Might be quickly silenced. The guns come out. If FaZe can't have a spotless CT side. Yeah, they have to match what Spirit's been putting down. And throws it, throws caution to the wind. With an aggressive maneuver! Oh! How has he pulled that one off? Again, it's Donk striking through the smoke. Frozen. <laughs> Can't quite believe it. I, I'm flabbergasted. He's done that to Brokey on Nuke. He's done it to Frozen here. An aggressive opening gambit from Frozen. And Donk just makes it look too easy. Unbelievable.
the mind boggles. And the Spodex silenced by a 17-year-old. I've got nothing to add. <laughs> I just can't believe what we're watching. Oh. Not only are they playing against FaZe, they're playing against a packed out arena. Yeah, and it definitely don't want them to win. And it definitely hasn't phased them. Well, they've been able to thread the needle. Roki saw absolutely nothing when he poked up his nose. Hey, Robs, they're coming. Robs, nose, press to the screen. Controls his spray for only the one, it's Donk again. And now, with Zontic's frag onto Broki, it's just Carrigan and Rain. The old guard. In a two versus four, two on four. There's no way in, Kit's present, short. Shiro, though, here to lock the door. Carrigan, he's got four! Own Donk with a triple kill to put Spirit on championship point. Denied. Carrigan, what have you got? He's got a bullet between the eyes from Chopper. Nine championship points for Team Spirit to do this cleanly. A 3-0. Check this one out again. Yeah, and you, all you can do is laugh, honestly. That's all you can do. What a run this has been. 13-0 to start the tournament against Apex, 2-0 against the Mongols, 2-1 against Na'Vi, 2-0 against Complexity, 2-0 against FaZe, 2-0 against Falcons. That's, that, that reads absurdly. Only dropped one map, and that was to Na'Vi on Anubis. Here we are. We're at the end of this story. The conclusion to that laundry list of scalps. The Grim Reaper knocking on the doors one by one and phase the last of four. Alex Donk has 26 kills in 16 rounds. And he may not be done just yet. FaZe most definitely are with just Rops and Brokey on either side of the map. Hope dies last. But what is hope? Delusion in the face of Team Spirit. Magix puts it together. This one's done. This one's been done. What a commanding performance from Team Spirit, Robs. You've got nothing to do. Lay down arms. He'll go down swinging. But we all know what this means. Team Spirit have done it! beast, the monster that has been unleashed. Donk be thy name, a star is born. Shiro, head in his hands as he realizes what this means. Team Spirit take to Katowice with one goal and objective, doubted every step of the way.
and an MVP performance unlike anything we have ever seen before. We talk about Counter-Strike's history, decades of history, and this has never been seen before. Donk has redefined the definition of Prodigy and Counter-Strike, and he has done so alongside of a very capable team. Claiming the Katowice title, a dream for many, a reality for Team Spirit. Oh, they are hoisting it, of course, but Donk, Donk, I have to go to you first. Can you step a little bit to this side? With an unbelievable performance the entire tournament, what does it mean to you to win the Intel X3 Masters Katowice? I don't know what to say. How happy are you? I am happy, very happy, very happy, I don't know. They're all cheering for you and I know that you always say it is about the team. So, do, would you like to say anything about your whole team's performance this tournament? I don't know, they are uh, the best players, I don't know. I love them so much. And maybe for a final question, um, you outfragged everyone here. You had the single best debut of everyone, anyone ever in Katowice. Why are you just so much better than everyone else? I don't know. A humble king, of course. Chopper, if I may, I'll come over to you. <laughs> if I don't slide. Chopper, it's been so long since the Vega Squadron days. You've always committed yourself to helping these young players, but this is your moment as much as it is theirs. What does it mean to you to lift the trophy here in Katowice? It means a lot for me что организация и все вместе построили такую великолепную команду. Спасибо всем и спасибо всем антимейтам за эту победу. It means a lot. So, guys, hey, if you want, but for much upper garden. Magis, uh, this seems like the beginning of a very, very bright future. Can you tell me uh, when you think about this moment and how you all played as a team? How many more of these performances can we expect from Team Spirit? Uh, get dunked. <laughs> All right. Well, Spodek, one more time for your Intel X3 Masters Katowice 2024 champions, Team Spirit! Wow. And you know, I just, with a wow comes a way, and for the way for Team Spirit, it is today. I can guarantee to you that these Intel Extreme Masters champions, I don't even know if they would have saw this coming when they came here, but if you listen to Donk, he might tell you just that. Yeah, I, I don't think anyone is going to forget this event and this day. I, I think we were all here to witness history, to witness the arrival of Donk on the big stage. So many questions that we had, so many, you know, boxes that we yes. were waiting for him to tick. And boy, did he tick them. There's can, no doubt left about this kid's kill. I can barely believe my own eyes. I was going to the point where I was questioning my own reality. Am I actually <laughs> watching what I am watching? Is, this, is the game really that easy? Is one man capable of dominating the game to that extent immediately from the get-go? And what this young kid has been able to achieve here in Katowice is historical. There's never been a rookie that has taken the world of Counter-Strike by storm the way he's done it. And I, for one, am honored and glad that we've witnessed it live here in Spodek. Yeah, Doc, definitely, you know, the question marks, I think, are just beginning, right? Because, A, how do you keep up this performance going further if you're Team Spirit and you're Doc? <laughs> but B, how do you top this? I think, Trace, you know, the best performance we've had in history of Counter-Strike was Nico at TSL 1 New York 2017, right? But that was only on seven maps. Yes. That was 1.70 rating for that tournament. Dog just matched that. After this grand final, he was 1.63 coming into the final. After it, 1.70 over, I think, 12 maps, more maps, more best of trees, more yeah. tier one opponents. 
even though they're equal in rating, I think it's pretty clear who has the best performance. A rookie, a guy who just turned 17 years old, is the best player to ever do it at a tournament. That's and a, crazy. And in a diff completely different style as well. Like his spray control is just out of this world. The swings, the movement, the aggression. I I'm all for it. I'm I mean, just, it, just give me more. It's, it's at some point you're like, man, there's no way, right? It's but then not. it's actually happened. It's already in the kill feed. Whether I want to believe it or digest it or process it or not, it has definitely already happened. Speaking of which, Spirit are your champions. So let's head on down the stage and let's put some medals on their necks. As we see the medal ceremony, of course, FaZe receiving their medals after a valiant effort and a great performance throughout the tournament. Unfortunately, not enough in the final. They are given their medals by the senior product manager of CS at IEM, Michael Parsons. And the entire arena was cheering FaZe clan. But unfortunately, the end of the road for them today in Kutimitsu. And for FaZe Clan, not the, the performance, or better yet, the expectation of what we had when we walked in here today. We thought this might be much closer at the very last map, at the very minimum, but no. Uh, for FaZe, it's back to the drawing board, and also kind of ruining that whole idea that they go to every final now and win. I mean, they still made it to the final. We're not going to take that away from them. But then the issue, I, I believe the second map is where we're going to have a couple of conversations. There was space for FaZe here to react, put us on 1-1, and maybe, just maybe, make these monster kids just relax and doubt for a little bit. But the problem is they missed that opportunity. We see on the eyes of this man, Kerrigan, so much he's achieved, but today wasn't meant to be. They were outmatched, and we're not going to try and finagle our way into excuses. The difference if level was here, and we have to accept it. And not for the lack of trying. I mean, they yeah. did pretty much throw the kitchen sink at Spirit, but nothing managed to work. They were just so much on point today. And yeah, Kerrigan, one of his favorite arenas to play in. This was his fourth Katowice Grand Final. And, you know, he's saying time and time again, you never know if you're going to be back the next year. You can't take it for granted. And this time it just wasn't meant to be. Yeah, it's, it is a rough go at it for FaZe here right now. But you, you look at what they prod in the server up to this point, and regardless of this final, give me some positives. I mean, listen, the level they've showed is amazing anyway, disregarding what happened in this grand final and the result. And in any tournament they participate in, when it comes to CS2 now, there will be a name that we expect at the very, very top. I mean, the integration of Frozen has been great. This grand final may be a little bit more timid, but overall, a good performance from them. And with the Major around the corner, we know that FaZe is going to be a client. This grand final does not change that. It doesn't at all. Yanko, tell me this isn't a flash in the pan for Spirit. Oh, please, no. I can't see how it is. You, the eye test doesn't fly. They're playing super solid Counter-Strike as a team. The individuals are stepping up. Donk is pulling off stuff that we've never seen before. Like, the level of consistency, it's just insane for yes. a rifler. We don't really see that nowadays. And this team has just been together for two months. It's been less than two months since Shiro joined. So they can still get much, much better. They can. And the room to grow is definitely there for us. I do think it's time that we figure out some more about our DHL MVP. Katowice, breaking records and pulling off an incredible performance. He has done what no rookie player has done before and becomes the youngest player to lift the trophy as well as pick up the DHL MVP. Please make some noise for Donk. Dom, you said to me before the game started you cared about the trophy, but now you stand there with a record-breaking performance. What does it mean to you? It means a lot for me, for sure. But uh, the, our win uh, as a team, like, mean for me, uh, but um, more yeah, than yeah, it. Yeah. The team performance is important, but right now you said on the desk yesterday you don't feel like the best player. You just broke records. You look like the best player. Do you think now, CS2, this is going to be the era of Donk? You can be the best player? Yeah, now we'll see you later. 
We don't know, we will see. But this man stands here tall, strong and dominant. One last time, Karis Winter, make some noise for your DHL MVP, Dong! Donked, donk this, donk that. They're gonna be saying donk everything here for a little while. I'm pretty sure of that, Maniac, at the very minimum. I mean, listen, it is all absolutely in order that we gave him so much praises. I just, I struggle emotionally to keep up with it. You're supposed to have a crescendo with lores of players and trajectories, and you're supposed to have adversities and challenges and maybe a couple of disappointments, and then you see this project just coming together and then they peak. That's not what's happened here. He went from zero to 100 real quick in Spodek. <laughs> so how am I supposed to cope with this? How am I supposed to consider him a god of the game immediately? Like, what's happened next? How, how would you, it's like, it's like if you go on a first date and you give your absolutely everything, you have a five-star hotel, you have a seven-meal course, you pull up on the Rolls-Royce. What are you going to do the second date? What do you mean? How are we going to get more excited? What the hell is this? Why are we going to a hotel on the first date? That's the biggest question, which is exactly what Spirit has done here in the Grand Final. They I, found a way to do it. I think in all of this, you know, dating conversation, I think what I love the most <laughs> about Donk... Get out of the way, man. Let it, man, come over here. There we go. Go on, join us. All right, Donk's going to be joining us right here on the desk. This is a pretty exciting time. Hey, Hi. man. Hi. How are you doing, fella? Oh, good. Yeah. yeah. Is, it a, is it a lot to take in right now? A lot going on. Uh, hey. Are you getting tired of the interviews? Mm, not, really. <laughs> not really. Not really. How much fun are you having right now? I would. <laughs> I would. That's beautiful. They love you, man. Do you understand? how much impact you already are having on the game. No. It, it is happening. No, I don't know really, but... Can you tell us a little bit how you experience this grand final? How it was for you emotionally to play this game, to win this 3-0? How did you feel tonight? Mm, Nuke was tough one, because we lost uh, Eco, like Forest by, so... Like, we lost our uh, ini initi initiate. Yes. So it uh, got more uh, harder than can, can be. Uh, about Mirage, uh, on pistol, my game was just locked and I died. <laughs> oh, no. So we went from 3 0 to 5 7, I guess. It's a good uh, uh, half for T, and the city side was like very good. I don't Did know. you feel in control? Did you feel relaxed? Yeah, yeah, yeah. On C on city, on Mirage, we was we were so relaxable. We, we was calm. We knew if we are doing all right, all good, uh, we we're gonna win it. I wanted to ask you about you been incredibly consistent the whole tournament. Play in, group stage, playoffs, you played the same. How was it in the team with the communication and everything in the final? Was it almost the same as in groups? Was there any difference, a little bit more chaos? Mm, about communication, I think it was uh, almost the same. Just uh, I think we need uh, more uh, confidence. To more confidence? More confidence. Yeah, to play better. But you already win every fight, so <laughs> where, where, where do you want more confidence? Oh, I get it. Hey, Donk, let's do this, man. Um, is there anything you want to say to the people at home? Just write down the pipe. Just tell them what they need to hear. They're right there. Mm, people home. Спасибо всем, кто болеет. Это огромная поддержка, я ее ощущаю. Даже несмотря, что весь зал против нас, как казалось бы, но слышны эти крики 200-300 людей, которые болеют за нас. Это очень приятно. Это скрасило наш вечер. И я вас очень сильно люблю и ценю. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for putting on a show, Donk. We're having a good time watching it. Keep doing your thing, man. Thank you. No problems whatsoever. This is how it all shaped up. We got a quick bracket here for you. And uh, Yanko, yeah, it doesn't deceive any of us. It, that is a 3-0 at the very finish line of this race. Yeah, t t Team Spirit lost one map. I know. In this whole tournament, 13-11 to Navi on Anubis. That's it. Outside of that, 
complete and utter domination. And I just wanted to finish my point on, on Donk. What I love the most about him is his innocence. That's There's right. nothing. You know why his question answers are I don't know? Because who thinks he probably at 16, doesn't know. 17 years old about these bigger things and whatnot? He's just focused on playing the game, having fun, like we all used to at that age when we were competing, right? And I think for Spirit, one of the main things is keep hold, you know, keep a hold to that. Keep the innocence. Yeah, protect him sort of from now all the <laughs> hype, all the hype, everyone's gonna want a piece of him, like interviews, all this talk, just let him keep doing the same thing because it's absolutely incredible to witness. It's a show of force. It really is a wild ride to watch this kid play this video game, but also even more wild ride would be these final standings. You're gonna see some big names there towards the very end, but ultimately it's that big prize purse of Team Spirit taking 400 big ones home. Um, and that's not just it. Right, so we talk about prize pools, we talk about prize purse, you know, the division, how it all breaks down. Now they've qualified oh, for the yeah. Intel Extreme Masters in Cologne. I mean, listen, the way they've been playing Counter-Strike, the way Dong has been dominating right now, and the whole machine behind Spirit, you just want to see them in every event, and you want to see what's going to happen, if there's going to be any reaction, if they're going to keep up the pace, Yanko is right. Can he stay in this bubble and keep absolutely dominating? Dominating. We're gonna have to see. Look, he almost made it far enough away from us. No, he's no one's gonna leave permanently. Hey, check this out though. For Team Spirit, the sweetness doesn't just end right there. We're talking about adding Team Spirit now with a notch towards the Intel Grand Slam. Yeah, absolutely. And you have to win either Katowice or Cologne to be able to complete it. So they're off to a great start. Nine more chances to win three tournaments. We have, you know, Chengdu Pro League coming up. They might have a chance already there, but. They've just been so dominant at this tournament. A lot of teams are going to have a tough time figuring them out. The Intel Extreme Masters in Chengdu? You hey, guys gonna yeah. be there? Or? I mean, oh, if you want, want me to be there, I'll, I guess I'll be there. I'll ask some guys to give you a, give you guys a, a call as well. Every okay. guy call my guy. Yeah, and then maybe they'll call then our guy back. Um, have a conversation. Yeah, maybe. But again, you know, Spirit grabbing a notch towards Intel Grand Slam does make it spicy, albeit a man that is no stranger to the Grand Slam itself is Kerrigan. Let's hear from him. And perhaps in just a moment. Hello. It's sometimes. Is it me you looking for? <laughs> oh, this is good. <laughs> like we do karaoke sometimes uh, when we're out of the workplace, but uh, this would be quite the venue to do karaoke. In. Quite the crowd as well. It yeah, could quite be, the crowd. Actually. Uh, yeah. So coming up is Shangdu. Uh, and there's some things to take in from that one, Maniac. Perhaps. I mean, listen. I, I mean, you have to tell me if Spirit's going to be there because I don't want to get so excited about it, and they're not going to be here. Rain on my parade. But I'll be excited to see them again. I think from this point on, we are going to follow their steps every event they go to, and people are going to be waiting for a downfall. Like, you know how we are. We have the, like, viciousness. We're like, oh, we're ready to see you fail. Is it going to happen? Is there any way that they're going to fail? And how are they going to deal with it? That's going to be the next interesting chapter. Yes. Let's try this one again. A man very close to all our hearts, especially mine. His name's Kerrigan. He's got some words for us. Certainly the crowd favorite and a team that always fights hard, but FaZe will end this in second place. And Carrigan, we saw the emotion on your face. We saw the frustration that you experienced throughout all of this. I want to just go to Mirage, right? Because did it feel like you had that, like that one could have been yours? I think we, we came great from start on CD side. I think we had some entries on B side of Mirage and they managed to, to trade from disadvantage. And I mean, <laughs> Oh dear. Psych. Shout out Henry Greer, since we're here in this moment together. <laughs> Except for Henry's not with us. Uh, yeah. Kerrigan's words cut a little bit short there. Just like his grand final. Yeah, just like the grand final. They didn't go five, we did get three out of it. But uh, I'm very sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. Sometimes uh, those things happen. And now over to Yanko in the studio. Yeah, I, I think it's tough for Kerrigan, right? He's very aware of how difficult it is to get to this stage, to get to the grand final. He's not getting any younger either, right? Who knows how long is he going to continue to play, whether he has some different plans. Is, he, is this the last time we've seen Kerrigan in the spot deck? I hope it's not the case. I, Honestly, I think this, this signing of Frozen gives a, a lease on life for FaZe to go on for further, for longer, to be at the very, very top. I, I, inside of me as a, an ex-professional makes me feel like, you know, when you lose this grand final the way it happened, 
might as well just laugh it off. You're gonna have regret on a map where maybe you think you could have had, but bro, it's like, we all witnessed the same game and they're gonna go back and they'll witness the same game and talk about oh, how Mirage could have gone a different way and we'll agree on that. But at some point, you, you just gotta accept when the beating's coming your way. And things you're not gonna, you know, try to take back and change is gonna be the fact that on Nuke, you did get you did get pushed around. That did happen and it felt And like, on overpass. And on overpass, but Donk's crosshair couldn't be in the wrong spot on Nuke. That's what it felt like for me. For and if it is, you get flicked, so. Yeah, no matter what, it wasn't meant to be. Hey, gentlemen, Thank you very much for your time today and throughout the duration of this tournament. Also, thank everybody who's, uh, who's been watching at home, my fellow talent, all the people behind the camera, and the people that make this very much a reality. It's called eSports. If you haven't heard of us, come check us out. We're going to be going to an extended break, and by that I mean we'll see you in Chengdu. Good That's night, night, everybody. Break. This ain't new to me Since the age of 22 I've been using it Like it's fuel to level up Like it's champagne in my cup Like there's nothing interrupting my pursuit of dreams There's a vision in my mind It's consuming me Take my confidence combined with opportunity Mix it up with unity Soon to be the greatest of my generation Operation Victory Fight or fly We will stay Through the perils we dare not to stray Spark the match, light the flame Out of luck, out of sight, dangerous Dynamite Dynamite! Setting fire to the clouds at the speed of light Going up, the top and down, screaming We are, we are Superman's kryptonite We are, we are So blowing up dynamite Dynamite! Setting fire to the clouds at the speed of light Going up, the top and down, screaming We are, we are So Superman's kryptonite Check it. <laughs> Troubled days, lonely nights, a lot of tears, a lot of fights. Big dreams met with bigger lies. It ain't what it seems from the outside. On my downfall, they pray. Will I surrender or will I betray? Given the trauma that lives in my brain, or use it to fuel up the fire in my veins? I never complain. I boss up and do it. If there's a battle, I fight my way through it. If the wind blows, I thank God that he blew it. Cause what is a blessing depends on you view it. The fruits of my labor are in abundance. Indispensable, I'm not redundant. Incomprehensible, the way I've done it. When the struggle pushes me out, I'll shove it. I'll rise above it. Fight or fly, we will stay Through the perils we dare not to stray Spark the match, light the flame Out of luck, out of sight, dangerous Dynamite Dynamite! Setting fire to the clouds at the speed of light Going up, the top and down, screaming We are, we are Superman's kryptonite We are, we are so blowing up dynamite Dynamite! Certainly the crowd favorite and a team that always fights hard, but FaZe will end this in second place. And Carrigan, we saw the emotion on your face. We saw the frustration that you experienced throughout all of this. I want to just go to Mirage, right? Because did it feel like you had that, like that one could have been yours? I think we, we came great from start on CD side. I think we had some entries on B side on Mirage and they managed to, to trade from disadvantage and I mean, the Tunk played a great game, right? And an all pass at that point, when he just started wrecking us, like killing three and four, yeah. it's not often with a team like our, with our skill level that you can uh, kill so many without trading. So obviously a very rough game and I really wanted to win today, but it is what it is. And uh, yeah, a little bit disappointed in myself in the end there, but I think we fight it as much as we could, but they, they were destined to win this tournament. And in terms of that, right, I want to touch on you in particular because I saw your face after Mars when you were going into overpass and I don't think I've seen you look that sad between maps. What was going through your head at that point? I mean, in some way, right, I was like, okay, if that's one team, in team I can believe they come back from a 0-2 yeah. in a tie one. It's our team, right? But looking at overpass at that point, it has been a shaky map. We had a game plan. And I felt in control of some rounds, but once we hit the sides, it wasn't going according to plan, right? So, I mean, I tried to, to let go emotions. Um, the last round, the way we lose a Mirage 12-11 is, is something that will haunt me. I think 
people did some mistakes and that happens right the, the tension is high but uh, it is what it is um, but at that point it was, they were unstoppable on all pass uh, Dunk just did, destroyed us on the first half and let's talk about Dong. You've experienced many players across your long career. Have you ever experienced something like this, though? Because this seems something unique, something different. For now, it seems um, nothing we've seen before. Um, but we have seen Saivu. Uh, I think it comes from the same situation, same school, right? But we have seen all buzz dominating the, the, the scene for many years. Uh, so in my case, I think Dong is, is a unique prospect. Uh, can he keep up the level? Can he keep up the pressure? Uh, the expectations that come through it, right? Yeah. He definitely showed in the final that nothing could touch him this event. And uh, yeah, for me, he's the real deal. And we just have to give him time and, and see if he can keep to doing the same performance because that was insane. Real deal, very true words. I just want to touch on, obviously, Katowice's second place is still great. It's not what you would have wanted. But will you say it's a positive going into the RMRs on the major cycle? I mean, we are where we are, right? We are fifth grand final in a row. Uh, we are the team to beat if you want to win a tournament and if you don't, we win it. Um, Got to have the same mentality, but obviously this game hurts a bit and in 48 hours we're playing in a studio environment for Amar. We have to stay strong and stay focused and um, before we can have our eyes on the Copenhagen Major, we need to have eyes on them now. Um, I know we have the label, but obviously this was a big slap in the face and uh, yeah, that happens sometimes. Well, there's one team we know that can always come back. It's FaZe led by this man. But that's it here for them at Katowice. Such an incredible result from Team Spirit. We can see all the emotions. And uh, Shiro is just handily ducked underneath the table. Um, Shiro, first of all, how heavy was it actually to lift that trophy? I'm really happy. It's my memories. Uh, need... Sorry, but my English is so very bad. <laughs> all people know this. But it's tournament, it's so good for me. Uh, it, this trophy, it's impossible, really. I'm very, very happy. We could see so many emotions coming over you guys. Yeah. Um, because I live in Cloud9, and I'm going Team Spirit, and uh, two months, and we win Katowice. For me, it's no... I don't know, really. You can't even describe it, because it's so... I mean, you've made history here today, yourself, Donk. Um, give me a few words about Donk and you being a teammate of his. Donk is so good player, really. He, I don't know, it's young talent, and he's playing first time in uh, crowd. I don't know, it's... Very, very good player, really. You seem really happy as well. Obviously, the win is a reason for that. But even before that, you're smiling all the time. You're laughing. Yeah. You're having a great time. Describe the mood of the team that you're in now. Yeah. yeah I, sorry, but I don't, don't understand. Like, uh, what's the vibe? Vibe check of Team Spirit? Uh, I think it's so good vibe. Because, I don't know, we win phase 3 zero. It's so me For me, it's... Really, really good achievements. Yeah. You've made history here today. Final question. That trophy, it looks really big. How heavy was it to hoist, to get a workout? Yeah, I need a workout, yes. <laughs> Thank you so much, Shiro. Uh, incredible result here. And you've got uh, RMRs coming up soon, yeah? Yes. Is that full focus? Yes. Excellent. Congratulations, man. Zontix. You had your phone in your hand. What was the first thing you did on your phone? I was checking DMs from <laughs> from family. Oh, what did the family say? Of course, they're happy for me. Yeah. What can you, What can they say? Are they proud of you? Yeah, I think so. Are you proud of yourself, though? You know, I could play better. <laughs> no, no, like like for real. I, I wasn't playing like good. You know, but I have a donk in my team, so... You know, it was the point when I'm sitting and I'm like, yeah, I'm playing bad, I should play better. Yeah. But we are winning. But So what I look at, right, I'm telling you when I see the eye test, you say you're playing bad, but you guys are still winning rounds and you're still having impact. Do you not think that like, okay, I still did this, I still did my job? Yeah, but I can see that I can play way better. It, it's not like the potential, like overall, like how can you play? But I see that I'm making mistakes that I'm not making uh, usually. So that's, that's what I mean when, when I'm saying that I'm playing bad. Now I want to ask you, we were doing interviews at group stage, yeah? 
and you gave me more answers, you were more uh, open, I would say, yeah? Then it came to playoffs, and it was more very small answers, very short answers. Is this because you wanted to focus on the stage? Why was this? I felt like I got a different Zontix. You know, I just... When I first uh, hear these questions, yeah. I have some something to say. Okay. But I hear them over and over again, and I just, you know, <laughs> what can I say? Like, I'm just saying always like the same, you know? Yeah. I'm not elaborating because it's always like really the same. So I, I cannot say anything. Okay, so you've done this, right? You guys have achieved huge success for Katowice. What's the next goal for you? Major. Major win. Yeah. And after that, what's the... Because right now we're looking at this team like something we've never seen before. The fact is not just Donk, it's a lot of good players. I look at the team play you guys have. So how do you make sure you stay on top? Uh, we have to keep our motivation and we have to keep progressing. Like, you know, uh, it doesn't matter if we win, we should still be training as much as before. And we still have a lot of problems in our game and we should fix them. And over time, we will see new problems, and we should fix them. But the uh, first thing you need to have is motivation. So if you really want, I think you will do, you know? And is there anything you want to say to family and friends out there? I'm just... Yeah, I, I will say in Russian. Я благодарен всем, кто болеет, поддерживает. Маме, папе, привет. Well done, mate. Donk, I know you're a very popular man right now, so thank you so much for taking the time. Um, first of all, you lift the trophy, you got the medal, you win the DHL MVP. Was there adrenaline in that moment? Can you describe what was going through your head? Yeah, I'm, I'm out of the world. No words, really. Did you expect it to be 3-0 versus FaZe? No, no. What do you think was key for it being so dominant from you guys? I don't know really, we won uh, very important matches on Mirage and on the Nuke, so I think we just know both them because of matches. I think that's it, that's the key. And you said to us yesterday, after your semi-final win, you did feel a few nerves in the first few rounds. Was that the case here again today, or was it like stepping onto the stage, you were familiar with it again? It was the new, uh, we won Piso, so after Piso, I, I haven't some nerves. Back in form, back in action. I want to give you an opportunity to say anything to the people at home supporting you, the fans in the audience as well, anything you want to say? Mm, I already said on the desk, but I'm going to repeat again. Спасибо всем, что поддерживаете меня. Я вас очень сильно всех ценю. Это просто неописуемо, насколько вы помогаете и поддерживаете нас. Спасибо вам огромное. And one final question. Everyone was saying this patch was going to be the donk nerf. Can you say it to the camera? This wasn't the donk nerf. It was the donk nerf. <laughs> it definitely wasn't. What do you want to say? I feel in thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you love this meme. Are you proud to lead the team to victory like this? Yes, I'm really happy about uh, how the, uh, the team work, how the, my teammates work. They very good personalities and I like to play with them. I want to talk about the relationship with you two. You've been on the same team since 2019. You've seen different players. You've had different highs of your career. But how do you describe what this team is like and how different it is to any other team you had? Get donked. <laughs> All right, Magix, OK. You give me one word answers once again. You lied to me. Yesterday, you said Donk has been nerfed and you're fucked. You were not fucked. Then today you said you will lose 0-3. You won 0-3. Are you mind gaming me? Uh, it's just Donk things. <laughs> Do you have anything you want to say to all the haters out there, though? Because you were getting booed like crazy. Uh, I guess it's not a problem. Uh, uh, Face is a very good team, and the uh, uh, crowd cheer for them. It's OK for us. It's not a problem. We, we need to be more. Как сказать, короче, нам нужно заслужить топу. Well, if we want the crowd to support us, we need to achieve that through the great placements and great tournaments. So get dunked.
<laughs> I love that mentality drop. I really love that. That's great. Magic, so I'm going to ask you non-Counter-Strike. You're an anime man, yes? You like anime? I hate anime. <laughs> Stop lying to me, Magic! I was going to say, what anime as a team is team spirit? One Piece. One Piece. What was it? One Piece. One Piece. One Piece. I can't like that. Now, there's one other thing I'm going to get you to do. Zontix, I'm borrowing this chair quickly. Da, 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 da. Sorry, Zontix, I'm moving this out of the way. We've got to be careful of the trophy. Careful of the trophy. You like kicking chairs? Oh, yeah. Can you kick the chair for me? Uh, I will give it a try. Go on, do it. Go on, Magix. Go on. Go on. Oh, no, don't kill your teammate. <laughs> <laughs> okay, one more try that way.
Why you doing? 